Give me a moment, chat. Welcome. Welcome to the office hours. My name is Paul Berserker01, Batman, humble host and space bartender at the Astro Pub. Starting here. Seconds. Just editing audio for a video that I'm doing uh, in the beginning of April. You can take away my spaceship. You can take away my space suit. You can even take away my space lasers. But you can never, ever. Take away my space game. Eighty nine Dig Dug just resubscribed for twenty seven months. I W U V a show, U W U. take away my spaceship you can take away my space suit you can even take away my space lasers but you can never ever take away my space game <laughs> Lucas underscore DSC just resubscribed for 18 months. Mmm, them bitties. Oh, fuck it. Can't forget the vest, can I? Hey, welcome! My name is Paul Berserker01, Batman Shelly, humble host and space bartender here at the Astro Pub. You're a space bartender on Twitch. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We got a good one for you. Didn't think it would say what? Ugh. Right, I'll turn on the sound alert so you can actually do it. You can take away my spaceship. <laughs> you can take away my space suit. You can even take away my space lasers. But you can never, ever take away my space game. <laughs> Red Martian just resubscribed for 18 months. Strong independent pubbers don't need no bartenders. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because otherwise you'll drink the whole damn bar dry. But thank you so much for the 18 months. You can take away support. my spaceship. Spaceship. You can take away my space suit. Suit. You can even take away my space lasers. Keep it on, helmet. Keep Put your helmet never, on, man. <laughs> ever. <laughs> take away my space game. <laughs> Yeah. 
Jen and Tanak just resubscribed for 53 months. Keep the helmet on, man. Thank you so much for that 53 months to support there, Jen and Tonic, and the uh, 19, 18 months Red Martian, the 18 months Lucas, the 27 months 89, and thank you for the biddies there, Drycon. You're all very important covers, very impressive pieces, very neat pedestrians. You all rock, shots and cheers, and chat, y'all shots and cheers. Uh, I was looking a little take green. Away my spaceship. Yeah, it ain't easy being green. You can take away my space suit. Suit. You can even take away my space lasers. No pew pews. But you can never, ever, take away my space game. RD Madeira just resubscribed for 33 months and one more. Thanks for that Twitch Prime for 33 months. You were a very important pump of van precipice or very pedestrian. This is all you lose my trick and I trust the Jews and chat y'all trust the Jews. Alright, welcome to the office hours. <laughs> This is a, a live stream where we, uh, kind of like an AMA live stream where we talk about Star Citizen news, lore, and more. Um, this one will, by the necessity of me streaming a ton tomorrow, be shorter than typical. Um, so I'll be, uh, I'll because I'll, I need to get to bed on time so I can wake up and get breakfast <laughs> before I start streaming. Um, at 8 a.m. tomorrow my time, so 9 a.m. Eastern, that's like... 6 a.m. Pacific. We'll be back um, then on Friday, and then that's going for at least 12 hours. So, um, with a maximum cap of, get this, 42 hours. That's right. You could make me play video games. <laughs> and stream it for 42 hours. Now, I can hear a lot of people sitting there being like, Paul, that's insane, you're gonna kill yourself. No, that's not what I, I am going to be sleeping. It's not a no sleep thing. It's uh, a situation where uh, it's kind of a, it's called a capped subathon. Or I'll say the cap, uh, the the uh, cap, uh, Cat the Pubathon is what I call it. The idea is, is that I will stream up to a point and then go to sleep. And then wake up the next day and stream. So the time I'm sleeping, the time I'm, uh, I'm when I'm sleeping, I am still uh, going to come back and stream. Uh, I just won't uh, count it towards the hours. So the way it would work is 8 a.m., to like 11 or 12 p.m. on uh, Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 to 12 p.m. on Saturday, and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. So, you watch your sleep? No, 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 no. I just pause the stream. I either pause the counter or I just turn off the stream and continue doing it. Like playing chess with timers, yeah. Yes, we're gonna be doing a subathon tomorrow. Hey, Af. You can take away my spaceship. Okay. You can take away my space suit. You can even take away my space lasers. No views. But you can never. Never. Ever. Ever. Take away my space game. <laughs> Tagan just resubscribed for 82 months. Let's keep the subbing going. Watch the man dance, flinging dancing dollars. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ath. You're a very important pupper. Very impressive pisser. Very pedestrian. This, this is your father. You're going to have trust and cheers and chat. Y'all trust and cheers. Hey, Paul. Any word on Helldivers 2? Uh, machine um, machine lore video. Really enjoy the info on those, uh, those vote-hating bugs. Sadly, Nicodemus, um, yeah, that video actually bombed really, really hard. And the issue with um, with YouTube and how the algorithm works is if a video bombs hard, the YouTube will YouTube will assume that like nobody watches your videos for that reason. So they actively delist your videos on 
um, like the like lower performing videos from the algorithm. So people who are searching for them, they end up not becoming searchable. Um, that's at least the theory, and that's at least the 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 intention, which is they like reduce the amount of ad space you're going to get on it because they don't, they're not getting as much as you normally would, which means that it becomes less visible, which means the video hurts, it gets hurt, and then that hurts your ability to be promoted as well. So I'm going to have to wait until Helldivers 2 hype kind of dies down a little bit and then do another lore piece on on the the, the, the bots. So basically, it's just, I, I, I got into Helldivers 2 lore when I thought it was going to be a niche little fun game that a handful of people, you know, that would be, I figured it'd be popular. I didn't think it would be the most popular video game of the, the fucking year. <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on the Ursa Rover Medical? Do you think we'll get it in May? I hope so. I've been talking about an Ursa Rover Medical um, um, in game for like literal years now. I've been thinking that's a that's an easy... Uh, an easy addition, an easy complement to the Apollo. And the galaxy. Typical Astro underestimating the hype? I tend to, yeah. But to give you an idea, let me pull up uh, the video. Because the thing is, is that I did a lore video. Like a like a like a starting lore video on um on Helldivers 2 lore. Like a primer. The day before the game released. I'm gonna pull up the the video. It still in the last 48 hours, it got 329 views. Over the course of the last uh, like 50 days. You can take away my spaceship. It has 60,000 views. You can take away my space suit. Which makes it like the third or fourth highest lasers. viewed video on my channel. But you can never. The Astro story of. Ever. Take away my space game. I'm alive. Maxol just resubscribed for 47 months. Gib servers meshing for 3.23 x. Thank you so much for that uh, uh, that 47 months of support. Gib servers for meshing for 3.23 x. You are very important, but we're very impressed with your pedestrian. This is your father, Christian Drake, and I. Shots and cheers in chat, y'all. Shots and cheers. As I was looking at someone, one person came through and posted a absolute shit ton of comments on my stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think uh, someone caught, uh, the, the, the news that we'll talk about right here, let me pull it up here. Okay. Here we go. This was the news that was released only a couple of hours ago. This was posted on RSI's um, official Twitter. says watch your back in alpha 3.23 so that's the news creatures are officially being added fauna are officially being added in 3.23 so you're getting the the crotch jog and the 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 weird like pelican bird Our new Overdrive mission is coming this week. It's hard to tell. CIG explicitly has said that they're on vacation. So my guess is no. 
I think they're probably taking overdrive, taking overdrive off this, uh, off overdrive for this, uh, uh, this week, but we'll see. Can you pet it? No, you can't pet the wild animal that will eat you. So the, um, the creature that you saw that looked like a dog, a cat dog, whatever, that, uh, that creature, uh, apparently, I'm going to look up the, the name because someone, someone said, uh, called a copian copian copy it's good it's cope <laughs> and the bird is named Marek. so i don't know any of those names from lore so they're new but uh both of those were actually referenced in squadron 42 uh the squadron 42 monthly reports constantly so these are things that were that are made for Squadron that are being imported into Star Citizen. But apparently they're the 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 the, the Copians are like Copion. Copion? The Copions are like literally all mm, over uh, Microtech. So you've Dembities. Is that what the Boreal Stalker became? Is that what they're called? Because what I'm what I'm hearing is that they're called the K O P I O N, Copion. I don't think those are the Boreal Stalkers though, because those don't look like the Boreal Stalkers. Copion, maybe I don't know. CIG has weird pronunciations. I'm sure everyone in the office has four different ways of pronouncing the fucking name, so I'm just gonna call it the Cope Dog. Hey, so you're confused. So you've got the Cope Dog and you've got the, the Martok bird. Damn, Darge is already. It's called the, it's called the, uh, it's, it's pronounced, it's the. K O P I O I O N. It may be Kofion. It's pronounced, it's spelled like this. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think we're going to see. Like, let's let's not jump ahead and start talking about hunting and, and scavenging those things. See, I, when we know they're going to be T posing everywhere and not functioning properly. And then it'll take CIG two years to actually fix them now that they've added them to the game. You can take and and then it'll take them another five years to actually put a, put a mission as part of them. You can even take away no, my No, Darge is already... It's another thing. But you can never, ever take away my space game. <laughs>
I'm, I'm dancing, Victoria. You, you can't even stop. Take away my space lasers. No views. But you can never, never, ever, ever take away my space game. Ramim underscore noodle just resubscribed for three months. Make sure that three months of support there, Ramim Noodle. You're a very important pupper. Very impressive, but you're very new pedestrian. This is your fault that you're going to and cheers in chat, y'all. Shots and cheers. Uh, question. Was this creature with eating like a Broctia on pyro stations? I have no idea. You think Logan is angry with me? Not really, because I said, stop saying that. That's fucked up, unknown. Don't tell people you're leaving a stream to watch somebody else's. That's really fucked up. That's being like, hey, uh, you're boring. I'm leaving, and I'm going to go watch this other person who's better. Bye. Like, go oh, fuck. That's, that's fucking mean. Don't do that. Never do that to anybody. Yes, go back to Loken and apologize. <laughs> He'll probably raid over here at some point. Uh, the horn of the Co uh, Kofian is a unique uh, combination of bone and naturally occurring carbon nanomaterials. When properly processed, it can be used to aid in bone regeneration with far greater rate of success than lab-grown materials. This application has made the valuable commodity. Hmm. What's up, Paul? Are your thoughts on this strident heavy frigate from Halo as anvil capable of the, the deploying a Valkyrie? Maybe. I I'd love to see more, um, like, like, like something that is designed to deploy a Valkyrie. <laughs> Thank you, Ziv. <laughs> Skewer. Oh. Uh, no, I don't think the things you eat on... Um, in the skewer. Isn't that rat? You're not eating... That, that, that thing's not a rat. The copians are not rats. The cope dogs are not rats. Yeah, Velg is pretty large, but at the same time, you know, uh, having something that's designed to, to, like, hold large numbers of troops and then load them up on ships and then deploy them to a location is an important sort of, like something that can ferry that sort of thing, like a, like a floating base. Um, and I know everyone's goes, well, that sounds like the, um, the Liberator. It is, but the Liberator is tiny. It's like too small. There's not a lot of stuff that you can load onto it. And there is no like beds for any of the personnel like you're carrying. There's only beds for the crew and there's only two crew, so. Hey, Paul, sorry I'm late. I just need to remind you about your beautiful Redeemer with the LTI that's unmeltable and, and untradeable. Uh, I fucking hate you. A, a name. <laughs> Haven't you been watching the news? Literally just talked about this. I don't, I don't follow the leaks too closely because the problem with leaks is that some of the leaks are just literally data mined from uh, PTU, and then some of the leaks are, trust me, bro, Yeah, that is, it is incredibly rude to say something like that. I never, never do that at a stream. Because if you're like, like, uh, you're, I'm going to watch um, this person. It's it's basically advertising somebody else's channel, which is, which is already a no-no. Unless the streamer themselves is advertising that person, don't do that. Eventually, we'll get a large ship mover, but only a matter of being allocated dev time. Yeah, it's not something that's, that's required. We don't even have another system yet, so. Nah, we don't, we don't need it. So, like, it makes sense to have a vehicle that's large, that can carry large ships like the Valkyrie. 
that doesn't have a lot of guns on it, that is mostly space-based. Effectively, you can think of it as kind of like a small version of a, of a, of a, um, of a, like a mobile station that has something like a machine shop, storage for vehicles, uh, uh, beds for people to log out in and to, to like to sleep in, storage for weapons and armor. Um, like, how are you going to get your troops from point A to point B? You know, especially Marines who have to be ready at a lot of a lot of times. And there is, there are vehicles that are kind of exist that exist in the universe, or in, in our real world, which are good parallels to that idea, which do work, and this would work well in game as well because larger ships move faster than slower ships, and they have larger quantum tanks, so they can go longer. So, sh like ferrying and and carrying people from two point A to point B is going to be important, and a lot of people are gonna to wanna to move with their ships. So having something that is effectively, it's called like a, a landing, a LHD, oh, I can't remember all of the names from, there's a bunch of different versions of it, because the general idea of what I said, there's a couple different specific ways of doing it, and if you say the wrong one, then somebody, uh, the, then every single veteran in the world gets a little like alert notification in their brain, and they immediately go like, 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 like pull out the glasses and go, all right, I'm about to fuck up this kid's world. <laughs> See, right there. I said it, and then Rob, Rob, uh, uh, our, our Bob shows up. Thank you, Rob, Rob. <laughs> LH, LHD and LHA, yeah. And LST. What about LSD? <laughs> That's the fun version. <laughs> I said it and then they, they came. Just say it the wrong thing. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, um, uh, the idea is, is uh, some people call them helicopter, um, uh, like like carriers. That's probably more like an LHA. Um, the, the idea being a mobile dock, a mobile base, as it were. It's not gonna hold a shit ton, but it's gonna hold enough for people, machines, take away my space tools. Ship to do a you job can take away me. my space suit you can even take away my space lasers but you can never ever take away my space game <laughs>
they, they've been around. These ideas have been around a while. Um, yeah, some of them are called those vivious assault ships. I think they're. I think there's like in the navy there's some some very specific versions because they're built in different ways. Some of them are built to handle helicopters. Some of them are built to handle like like ground invasions. Some of them are built to to deal with like. Uh, mobile, like kind of like mobile bases to stay offshore and away from combat and like bring in troops and supplies and stuff like that. They're all different, different specific variants for this. But with Star Citizen, you can just kind of lump a lot of those things into one idea. Have something kind of like a repair bay, have something with a, the berth for crew for like, you know, 50 people or 60 people, uh, whatever, whatever you want to kind of throw it in up there. Like, like, I mean, personally, I'd say like, fuck it, 100. Put like 100 people in this bitch. You're already putting two uh, Valkyries on it. Why not have a hundred beds? <laughs> um, and uh, even if the Valkyries just rest on the top deck, you know, or something like that. Uh, and uh, like an armory and, uh, and supplies. I'll make two different ships, twice the sails. No, you make the same ship, but you make a civilian version and a military version. You still get to the sales, but you don't have to do twice the work. You can reasonably have close to 50 guys in a Valk. Basically enough people to fill up two Valks, which is like 80, I think. Because I think it's 20 is the capacity. Stop giving them ideas. I've been giving them this idea for years. <laughs> I've been giving this idea since before the Liberator existed. Because this is the idea that I, I I floated, and then Shree came out, and we kind of talked about it, and said a similar thing. And then the Citizen Con that we talked about it, um, someone mentioned, someone texted me, mess messaged me on Discord, and said, hey, Paul, they made your ship. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I was like, oh, yeah, like, the Liberator is basically my ship. And what, eight crew? Uh, there's two gunners and a pilot, and then there's, there's four gunners and a pilot, so five is technically the crew. Maybe seven if you count the door gunners. No, I mean, the tw civilian versus military, twice the sales have to work. They already do that. <laughs> See the F7C um, uh, Mark II and the F7A Mark II. Uh, the UEN has no ship to launch legit planetary assaults from, from say, from Bengal or Pegasus ships, and you, you don't want to put your Bengal carrier in in uh, in a place where it needs to land on a planet. <laughs> you want something that could land on a planet, probably won't, but will function as a, as kind of like a, a mobile base if need be in a pinch. But mostly is designed to d deliver troops to a, to a battlefield. That slightly smaller version of a Bengal is almost certainly a battle cruiser. Yeah, stop reaffirming their old ideas. So yeah, uh, to come back to the to, to the to the thing, Fauna is coming in three two three. It looks like we're getting the uh, the Cope Dog and the uh, Martok Bird. Those are those are the names I'm calling it. I'm not changing it. It's the Cope Dog and the and the Martok board, Bird because CIG calls it the Kofion or the Kofion, Kofion, and uh, the bird is called the Marok. So I'm like, yeah, the Martok and the Cope Dog. I don't think they've shown they've shown off the cow, but I don't know if it's been confirmed in the game. If the cow's been in game. <laughs> Lore on animals when? I already did one on animals. And all of the ones that I I did were with like even footage and, and information on. CIG said, nah, none of those. <laughs> yes, that's that's the joke, Citizen Ninja. Co Kofion, Kopion sounds like copium, so I'm calling it the Cope Dog. Don't use General Martok's name in vain. That 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 uh 
that bird looks like it would die for the emperor, so or the empire. So I'm 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 a hundred percent. That thing stood down that that giant like horned cope dog and squawked at it. I hundred percent believe that is a Martok bird. Now cope dog. Hey, CIG named it. I didn't. <laughs> Question, will CIG sell the Mark II upgrade? Uh, what do you mean Mark II upgrade? Yes. Oh, you mean like the Mark IIa? The F7A Mark II? Yeah, eventually. Does credit card go whoosh? I don't think they'll do it with this this one. You'll have to participate because CIG wants you to participate, but... Glory to you and your paradactyls. That's uh, it's more Gowron, but yeah. <laughs> CIG named it, enough said. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to make fun of it. Yeah, I know the F7, the F7C versus the F7A. So the F7C Mark II is what we have now and you can get the F7A Mark II um uh, through this event. And if you're asking, will we see an F7A Mark II for sale, uh, like an up that upgrade for sale, I don't think we will. Not in this version. In maybe Invictus or later, but CIG wants to make this, uh, you to get the F7A Mark II if you participate in Overdrive. They want that to be the incentive. So, they will they? Eventually, yes. Uh, but I don't think they'll sell it initially because they did 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 they did say that the way you get it for free is if you um, do the overdrive event. Um, I can almost guarantee you we'll see the F7A Mark II for sale in in September because CIG the sacred that sacred cow has been slaughtered. CIG will sell everything. When's the wipe? Uh, I don't know if there's been confirmed a wipe yet. Yeah, I agree. There's phase two of Overdrive seems a little bit more phoned in than phase three or phase one. Uh, I feel like it needed to get harder and there needed to be more, but. Because CIG seems to be focused on getting 4.0, um, as the next patch after 3.23, uh, I don't think they're gonna want to wipe because they'll wipe with 4.0. If they sell, sell everything, then they will play, be able to, uh, players will be able to buy stations or planets. Uh, Ziv, they already sold, uh, land claims. That was already something they did, literally when they released the Pioneer. Any new lore? Yeah, there's a couple. There's there's some new lore. Um, the last monthly report, other oh, monthly report. The last uh, the last jump point had some stuff. Do, 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 do. Uh, on the headhunters, they had a full, full deep dive on the headhunters, which is our, one of the uh, factions of Pyro, one of the coolest factions of Pyro, honestly. They're kind of like the moderate group. They're still absolute psychopaths, but like you don't have normal people in, in, uh, in Pyro, and no citizens for Pyro aren't normal people. They're Hurston plants. They're just they're just corporate shills for Hurston. Yeah, it's gonna be a huge addition. The the personal hangar thing is is a fundamental shift in how Star Citizen plays. Like I can't like someone someone gave me shit um about about saying everything can't be a game changer. It's like tell it to fucking CIG. 3.23 as a whole is a fucking game changer. It completely changes how the game plays. 
uh, everything uh, fundamentally is going to change uh, with 3.23. Name even one way how it plays the game plays. Your cargo. Accessing and, and like getting your cargo, loading it and unloading it. Uh, uh, your, your, the way you access your inventory is changing. Uh, the, the, the way you, like the, what you see in the Moby Glass, how you interact with your maps. Like, I could go down the list. <laughs> Fine. Name three. Um, uh, the gunplay is completely overhauled. The character creator is completely overhauled. Fuck. You, 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 is this just you trying to get me to read, like, read the, like, release? Um, <laughs> the release... Uh, notes of Squo of 3.23. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the other stuff that's coming in. Yeah, ground vehicles and hangars. Not crazy enough to take off work to play. Don't. Never take off work to play a video game in the first releases. Never, ever do that. You are bound to get burned. You're gonna have a fucking horrible time when that happens. Um... Like, especially an online game, it's gonna break. No, no, not never. Yeah, I forgot. I even forgot about EVA. EVA is completely changing. Oh, the UI. Yeah, but it's not an online game. But you don't know the status of a game, even an offline game, like a single player game. You don't know how bad it's going to be at launch. Because there could be massive bugs or other problems. It, it's just never a good idea to try to take off time from work. Um, Cause like that, that opportunity cost is massive. There's, there is a, there is a problem with that. There is a, that, that decision is, is a, like absolutely weighted. Like, I was lucky that I had the day off from when, when Helldivers 2 released, but there were still some problems with that. Back in the co-op campaign days, I did that shit. That sounds an awful lot like dissident talk. Yeah, I had a great time, but everybody else seemed to have a bad time. Oh, shit. <laughs> Tomorrow, right? <laughs> UNKN zero WN guard one and just gifted ten subs. Thank you so much, Unknown Guardian, for that ten subs of support. You're a very important pupper, very impressive for any pedestrian. Um, I think you've given those 10 subs out. You're very, you're all very important puppers. You rock. Trust and cheers in chat, y'all. Trust and, trust and cheers. GameStop guy told me it didn't have a great launch. Which one? Conan Exiles? I don't remember Conan Exiles much uh, in terms of its launch. It was okay. Is the roadmap and run through report next week? I guess it is. Well, sort of. So, basically, since Chris Roberts has come out and said, um, we're working on a roadmap for 1.0, what that means is that we're not going to get the progress tracker until 1.0 is done. Not 1.0 the game, but like 1.0 roadmap is finished because that's going to be the progress tracker. And um, we'll probably, we'll almost certainly get uh, updates on the uh, release view, but not the progress tracker. 
I would I wouldn't bet on it. We will be retired when Star Citizen comes out, anyways. Cool, cool I got thirty years. <laughs> Rocket Tracker isn't dead; it's just evolving to being more fucking meaningful. I've talked with Jake themselves about this. Jake says it's not dead, much to their chagrin. They don't like the progress tracker. They've tried to kill it multiple times and have been overruled. So it's still there. It's still coming back. It's just changing because of how 1.0 is. Ooh. What's up, George Lucas? Man, I wish I was George Lucas. I wouldn't be streaming if I was George Lucas. I wish I had that kind of money, man. Uh, I don't care how much people shit on him. It's like, yeah, we'll let him cry into his like half a like a billion dollars that he got for Lucas Arts. Or for uh, Lucas, Lucasfilm and th that whole catalog. I, I grew up in the Bay Area, so, like, I don't mind it. <laughs> I grew up in the same place he did, so. If I was George Lucas, Jar Jar Binks would have been a, would have been a Sith. It would have been a long con for Jar Jar Binks to have been a Sith. He he starts off as the fun, friendly kids mascot, and you continue. I don't. I wouldn't have bitched out about about uh, turning him, like removing him because people got mad. I would have kept him in, and I've been like, deal with it. And then the third movie would come out, and he would be revealed as the uh, the the ultimate apprentice of of Sidious, and it would be fucking great <laughs> because it would be a nice. Uh, like evolving story of the corruption of innocence because by the time the third movie comes out the kids who were like 10, 11 when that game when that game when that movie came out would be in their teens or late teens so it's kind of like they could see the series eat, like kind of corrupt in front of them things getting harder to look at war being a real bad situation I think it would have been cool to have Jar Jar Binks as the other, either the apprentice of, of, uh, of, um, the Emperor, um, of Palpatine, um, or have been the master of Palpatine. Hiding in plain sight. Or maybe even the other apprentice of the of Palpatine's master. They're both from the same planet. It would have been cool as shit. That would have been a great prequel idea too, like a little like a little novelization of them meeting together and joining the dark side and that kind of shit. No, no, I haven't watched the IC yet. <laughs> uh, I gotta I gotta take my glasses off to watch ISC so I can see things because it's so blurry. <laughs> I mean, I know George Lucas's idea is that Star Wars is for kids, and he's right, it is for kids. But, you know, kids don't deserve stupid stories. You know, um, Avatar The Last Airbender is for kids. It's got a fantastic story, you know? Most stories that are told, uh, like epic tales that have been told throughout history, were told for kids. Like, you've you had people reciting things like, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey to... Um, to, to audiences, but who has the time to go to the theater and listen to these sorts of things? Children. Because they're like 
not working all most of the day. <laughs> I'll say Jar Jar Binks. These are these are new glasses, but I have to take them off because that's the only way I can see anything because of how blurry everything is. And it's pretty it, that, that idea, the the, the Darth uh, Darth Jar Jar idea, like you know D Jar Jar Binks is a Sith, um, would work. It would work as a storytelling device because it's also very much a, a cautionary tale for children. Beware who you trust. Just because somebody is funny and, bum and bumbly doesn't mean that they're truly good. The nice little cautionary tale for children. And I think adults would have been like, I respect that. And I think children would also have respected the, under would have understood that, that sort of thing. Exactly. Charismatic people can also be sociopaths, for example, regarding the be careful who you can trust. And that's kind of already in there. Like, like the whole idea is that, I mean, we know because we've been watching, we watched the entire like original series, but the person, the, us, like a kid who started watching the series with the prequels didn't know that Palpatine was evil. They didn't know that Palpatine was the puppet master behind the whole war. So when, when Anakin was getting closer to Palpatine, which I don't think they did well enough. Like, I think you should have gone deeper into that. Like Palpatine should have really kind of fostered uh, Anakin for like, 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 like really mentored him. Like they do it in the Clone Wars. Like the Clone Wars TV show does a really good job of that. But like, we should have saw that from the very beginning. Cause he already said like the very first thing he meets, says when he sees man Anakin is, you know, I expect great things of you, you know, um, or, or, or I'll watch your career with great interest, you know, because because he's interested in him. And it would have been more interesting in terms of that sort of him being sort of a dark master, uh, like as opposed to to Obi-Wan. So. If uh, if you could have one ship from Star Wars co uh, collabed into Star Citizen, which one would it be? Uh, he'd choose the N1 Naboo Starfighter. Uh, the Venator class Star Destroyers. The, the ones from the Clone Wars era. Those things are cool as shit. <laughs> Darth Misa gotcha. See, the thing is, is you would just drop the... the you would you'd have the same voice actor, and he would just drop the, the, the accent when he became, you know, evil. You, you would just go deep, you know, he just, just, he code switches instantly sort of thing. He did not keep the accent. Kind of that uncanny valley cutesy shit. Misa gonna cut you. <laughs> the carrier starter story, yeah, yeah, that one. See, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had because that would have been a great twist. Is that instead of having, um, instead of having Anakin just start killing kids for no reason, you know, uh, what I what I would have had is, um. Jar Jar Binks, who is the, you know, because there can only be two, um, a master and an apprentice. Uh, Jar Jar, uh, like, uh, uh, Palpatine always assumes that Jar Jar Binks is the other apprentice that got away. And then you would have Jar Jar Binks uh, be the, secretly the puppet behind everything. And then when Palpatine realizes what's going on, he sends... Anakin to the Jedi Temple to stop Jar Jar Binks 
to make him look like a hero. And it's Jar Jar Binks who kills all the all the Padawans and is causing all the havoc because he's he knows his goose is up and Palpatine has all the power. So Anakin and Palp Anakin and Jar Jar have a fight, but then Anakin is blamed for the kids' deaths. So he's still like trying to do the right thing, but it's taking all the 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 the, the blame for it, and it's just like going making him going crazy, you know. The thing is, is like, I don't, uh, like, there is a theory. For those of you who don't know, there was a theory, the Darth Jar Jar theory for a while. Um, I don't deny that that was probably, not necessarily the idea that George Lucas had, because a lot of filmmakers don't have ideas of what they're doing later down. They just kind of have, just kind of sketches. I think he probably wanted to do something with Jar Jar that wasn't just comic relief selling toys. Um, but he didn't quite understand what he was going to do. And the backlash was so big. He's just like, I'm not, it's not worth it. It's just, I, I am too frustrated by it. But I figure like if he, if he had gone through people who could tell him no, <laughs> in terms of the writer's room, um, it would have, uh, he, he, if he had the, the same crew he had in the original Star Wars, who could say, George, shut the fuck up. This is stupid. Um, and, and like go through and really work through a script a little bit more, you know, go beyond like a couple of drafts. I, I think he would have, um, uh, I think I think the character would have fleshed out a little bit more. I don't think the, the prequels would have been perfect. I still think they would have been worse from the originals, but I think they'd been more like the the sequels, but like more coherent than the sequels are. Like no one thinks the sequels are badly produced or like the plot points don't make entire sense, especially the first two. They're, they they still kind of make sense. Um, the prequels are just so lazy and they're so first draft. Yeah, the, the biggest the biggest concern, the biggest problem with the sequels is that they had no coherent thought. Like, the prequels had coherency. You could see where the story was going from 1, 2, and 3. It wasn't perfect, but it definitely had... They, there was weight between those movies. Like, you could see that 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 follow-through. There was just no... There was no aim for the sequels. Caravan of Courage was best of all. <laughs> Still valid. The proof, I think, was that CGI for Sar Jar Jar, they paid an animate Jar Jar waving his hand, standing behind key characters uh, when they talked with the, with the Gungan King while he was lip syncing and the lead characters were saying. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think that was intentional, but I do think that was either like a little Easter egg or like Lucas was like, that's neat. I'm going to do that. And But I don't think he had a full idea. I think he just had something. Like, you know, Jar Jar could have easily been a Force user down the line. That would have been a nice little you know, a comedy Jedi, uh, sort of, sort of thing, but. Yeah, eight was a good Star Wars movie, just not a good series movie. And I liked the bold, like, decision that they made with, uh, with, uh, with eight. Like, like, I like the, the whole, the, 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 the message. And then they just, bitched out in the last five minutes of it. It's like, no, 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 you you did this. You killed Snoke, you did all these things. You need to live with this, even at the end of this movie. People need to sit on it. And then you need to continue it through. People don't like shit, tough. Be artists. <laughs> People will buy it anyways because it's Star Wars. And they did. People went to go see it anyways, even though it was awful, the, the ninth movie. I'm I'm just I'm just a person who enjoys their Star Wars like they work they enjoy their Star Trek. Give me new and different. Give me something that's not been tried before in in the universe and take risks. Because if you take risks and you actually have an idea, fuck yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons why I like Star Citizen. It's like it is taking risks with its ideas. It's taking risks with its with its what it's trying to do. It's not just the same regurgitated shit over again. And it's going to fall on its face. And it has multiple times in the process. Um, and it still could entirely blow itself up. But so far, it's doing okay. 
Yeah, like Andor is a great example. Uh, the first season of The Mandalorian are great examples. Uh, for Star Trek, um, the Lower Decks is a great example of a Star Trek that's taking risks. Like, Picard and Discovery started, interestingly enough, but then they refused to commit. <laughs> You want to dance? Welcome, Loken. Welcome, everyone, from Loken Stream. My name is Paul Berserker One Batman Shelly, your humble host and space bartender here at the Astro Pub. Your space bar at the end of Twitch. Sit, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We've got a good one for you. Uh, someone someone came in earlier. I think it was Star Maniac. I don't remember. No, it wasn't Star Maniac. Someone else came in earlier, Loken. I was like, Loken got mad at me because I told him I was going to come over here and watch you. And I told I shamed him to go back and watch you. I'm like, don't do that. Don't say that shit. That shit's awful. Is taking risks, uh, it relies on a single source of funds. Taking risks means you also have to have a plan B. Taking risks is um, with uh, with its development. Yeah, I'd say Star Citizen does take a lot of risks with its development. Because if it was going to go for safe, it would choose stuff that is safe. It wouldn't choose new technologies and R&D which takes nine months to two years to develop as backbones of their game. <laughs> like, like no one would develop Star Citizen. Not a single game company would develop Star Citizen, even with the amount of money they've produced in terms of, uh, like, crowdfunding. There's no fucking way. It wouldn't be profitable. It isn't profitable. But it has nothing to lose? Yes, it does. It can easily blow up in their face, produce something that's absolutely awful. Say, saying that like they're, they're crowdfunding, like they are so thin margins in terms of their budget. They could easily have everything fall, fall like, like blow up on them right now. It just seems like they have, they're, like they're untouchable now, but it's not impossible. And then what? The game would probably sit in limbo or be completely shut down. Uh, can I pitch you a new Apollo variant and its features? Boarding Apollo. Swap out the areas that are the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the beds for nail drop pods. ODST hell diver drop pod into hell, bitch. Strap up and get fired into the under the under the planet in thirty seconds. The Apollo is built design is designed to be able to be maneuverable and handle like close quarters, and it's small. There we go. Drop pod version of a uh, of an Apollo. And then what? Who takes the risks? Take the risk there. People have jobs. <laughs> the people who are working there, the managers, all those people get their money from this development. If it fails, they're out of the job. The reputation gets gets nailed. Like there's, it's like saying, oh, like no one no one takes a risk when they drink a they drink a like like unfiltered water. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Chris wouldn't go bankrupt. He'd never work in gaming again. His reputation would be absolutely like basement bottom. And Chris isn't the only person working at CIG. There are uh, 1,100 people. There's an entire company they purchased, which would have be which would be ruined overnight.
people save all of the builds and stuff like that. I think I think I think the community would try to do something, some sort of revival project, but saying that Star Citizen isn't taking risks with its development is because because Chris Roberts isn't broke <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't end up being entirely broke. That's kind of nuts. To say that, that uh, 1,100 people are blind uh, uh, zombies that only ever follow what Chris Roberts says means that you've never, ever, like, talked to a CIG employee. Ah, Mal Malakina came in already, called everyone here cope, copey, cope dogs, so they're not, they're not here, uh, like, at all in, in good faith. They're here to, to, to stir the pot. I'm just, I'm just seeing how far they want to dig the, their holes before they leave. Well, because because the name of the of the new dog is the the Kofion dog, uh, the the, the Kofion, and so I just call it the Cope dog as a joke. It's the it's the cope dog and the Martok bird because the the bird's named Marok. Uh, it's just like it's the Martok bird. All right, let's do the ISC. Now that everyone's here, oh Loken, I'm gonna be doing a pubathon, so I'll be streaming very long time. I don't know if we'll be doing Overdrive or something else, but we'll do something because I'm gonna be streaming for a lot. So I'll, I'll keep you up to that on that one. Man, I'd love to see a Mark II Gladiator to be honest. Zappa. <laughs> that's, that's the point. I was gonna do this. Do you want to dance? Oh, of course. Not. Oh, thank you so much, Kidostrophy, for that raid. Welcome, everyone, from Kidostrophy's stream. My name is Paul Berserker one back on the show. Your host and space partner here at the Astro Pub. Your space bar at the end of the Of course. Of course we got this. We're going to keep him dancing, like, for 30 minutes. Yeah, that's going to happen. You can take away my spaceship. You can take away my space suit. I'd love to see you Phase 3, but I don't know if it's going to be... Phase 3 is going to happen, because CHG's on but break. But you can never, ever take away my space game. <laughs> Shinobi Trip underscore just resubscribed for 14 months. Thank you so much for that 14 months of support. The Shinobi, you're a very important popper, very impressive pisser of any pedestrian. This is your fault, the reason you're drinking Shots and cheers in chat, y'all. Shots and cheers. Well, now we're so down the far down, Malakina, you're so far down the, the point hole. That it's just like, this doesn't matter. The point I said is that CIG takes risks that other, other game development studios don't. You tried to say that Chris Roberts isn't taking risks, and then that nobody's taking risks for CIG. It, it, it's, you're trying to undermine, uh, like, not only my point, but CIG as, a, as, a, a, as, as an entity. It's not good faith, dude. You just come in and just shut shit talking. All right, let's get back into the actual video. So I'm going to do, oh wait, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do, uh, you're wrong, Malakina, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, 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 ISC. 
uh, the uh, capsule. I'll do a capsule with this one. So, which means I'm not going to refer back to the chat a lot. I'm just going to keep going. Hello and welcome another to... Well, I screwed that one up. Hello and welcome to another Office Hours. <laughs> okay, okay. For real this time. For real this time. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna do it because one of the things here, here chat, this is what I'm gonna do real quick. Just I'm gonna be this is going to be just an old something that's cowboy. gonna come out on April 1st, this one right here. So I want you to constantly say that you are all chat GPT uh or or just 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 start talking about random shit. Anything, anything you want to, as long as it's not like racist, sexist, or homophobic, just drop it in here. Your hottest takes on everything, okay? You ready? Hello, and welcome to another Office Hours. Thank you, chat. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to do the actual one. So what I'm going to do, and this is only for all, like, you know, uh, 300 people who are watching me right now. Um, I'm going to take that clip and I'm going to turn it into a 15 long, the 15 minute long video that I'm going to release on April 1st. It's going to have the clickiest of the clickbait titles, um, vague title, everything. And it's just going to be that edited into 15 minutes. Two words. Distress bacon. <laughs> Someone said one of these days, Paul's just going to say, do the capsule thing. And he's just never going to say it. And he's just never going to say capsule. I'm like, that's a good April Fool's joke. I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, let's do this better. All right. Hello, and welcome to another Office Hours. Look into my eyes. Look into them. You know what this is. You know exactly what this is. It's a capsule. That's right, a capsule. 
This is an office hour, a portion of my office hours live streams that I do on Thursdays at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, I believe. Uh, on twitch.tv slash theastropub, youtube.com slash theastropub live. Come join us live and hang out with chat here who's going to lie and tell you that it's uh, it's pre-recorded and all that kind of stuff. Well, I guess it's technically not a lie because it is pre-recorded. I am recording this section from the... It doesn't matter. We're going to be watching the ISC today uh, covering the UI from uh, March 28th, 2024. So come on and watch with us. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and hit the bell icon to be notified when these release. Let's get started. Zappa 323 continues its journey towards what's shaping up to be one of the biggest and most impactful patches of Star Citizen yet. We continue discussing the various aspects and features contained within. And this week, we're going back to Team Kian with a quick look at the updated lens and visor, loot screens, and new shopping interface. I love this this new thing with the uh, with a Zeus suit guy <laughs> or Zeus suit person. Oh, hold up, hold up. What? Something changed there. So this is what we have now. It seems is HDR up or something like that. What's the difference oh. between the lens? Hold on, I'm gonna back it up a little bit more. Sorry, one more time, chat. Crime stat. They still have the crime stat. And they have like Moby Glass or the, um, yeah, there's the, uh, the Microtech logo here too. That's the crime stat. <laughs> and a mini map. Yeah, awesome. I didn't even notice that. This is a little ne neat. Destroy server racks. What's the difference between the lens and the visor? It's down to whether you're wearing the helmets or not. The visor is essentially your hood projected onto the helmet. So it's shown on the visor in front of your face. When you take the helmet off, you're wearing a contact lens in lore, and that shows your hood as well. Of course, in a video game, you're going to need all that HUD information. You get information about your active status, your weapons, what you're holding. Notifications, your missions, your comms, your chatting, everything like that. Okay, okay, what the fuck? What the fuck? Your comm. <sighs> Please stop this, CIG. Please stop this. Are y'all seeing this, what I'm seeing? There's ghosting. So it's like it's like a it's like a drop shadow ghost that they put the effect to everything to make it look more holographic. It looks awful. That's it's not as bad as it used to be. But that's that's pretty bad. It's like it makes your eyes squint, and it's really bad for people like me who have astigmatism because like I have to focus, and it'll give myself a brain brain like I hate that idea. It's bad. Just remove that. It's it's this ghosting like drop shadow stuff. Just remove that. It's fine. It looks really good. I like it so far, but that's bad. Your missions, your comms, your chatting, everything like that is part of the visor and lens. But we don't want to do it and just it's magically there, right? You get the lens, it's right there. You have all the information projected on your eye immediately. And the second you put a helmet on, you will get the visor experience. It's making the UI diegetic. The big upgrade like in 323 second. isn't so much new information, but... If you go to Microtech, you can actually see they, at, at the, um, oh, what is it called? It's the store, the Microtech store, the Apple store in Star Citizen. Um, you can actually see the, um, the, uh, the lens. They actually have little contacts out there. That's actually, actually what's in your eyes. Like everything is is like diegetically exposed to you. So if you could take out the lens, which would be a neat, neat idea, CIG, to, to allow for people to do so, it would remove all the UI options, which would be kind of cool. Factory line. It's a new dynamic system for showing and hiding widgets based on your current situation. So all the basic information that you would see, like you need to know 
your health status. So you have all of these widgets. So nine 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 hundred um, H P A in area eighteen is very low. Yeah, if you, if you back this up a little bit, obviously it's ISC, so it's a little bit different. But he also noticed that his lungs are taking damage. So his lungs are actually he's only at eighty two percent, or this person's only at eighty two percent efficient efficiency with their lungs. So yeah, it's low, and their lungs are suffering from it because they're low pressure. So it's harder for them to breathe, which is actually, it makes sense. For showing and hiding widgets. Does a Paul diegetic account? <laughs> Based on your current situation. So all the basic information that you would see, like you need to know your health status. So you have all of these widgets telling you, okay, you're dying from this thing. You're, you have no oxygen. Jimothy, no. It's warning you of all the different hazards that you can meet out there. Jimothy. We've got regions all over the lens, and we can specify which widgets we show on them. For example, down the bottom right, we've got the weapons. We've got the control hints. And we've got low priority notifications, which can take up a lot of real estate. If something else shows on screen that would overlap one of those, it'll, one of the lowest priority ones will dynamically turn off, and it'll all fit nicely onto screen again. Previously, all notifications were. That's definitely crime stat. What you're seeing here is a crime stat because it's flashing red. It's flashing red, but it's specifically with Crusader. So it's saying in Crusader space, you have a level three crime stat, which I like. That's separating the crime stat from a global crime stat and more local. I like that idea. We're shown in the center of the screen, which fact, could get pull back. Notifications were. Previously, all notifications were shown in the center of the screen, which could get a bit busy. We've now introduced the concept of low priority notifications, which anything that's not super important to you will show in a box down in the bottom right of the screen instead of being loud and in your face. The UI for the missions and objectives, again, that's all been updated. The notification should animate over to the right hand side of the screen where we've got our new objective UI. This presents essentially all the same information as the old objective UI, but in a much nicer package. We've also reworked the weapon UI, so you see a more detailed description of the weapon that you have. And this new visor and lens has been adapted to incorporate the new minimap. I love it. Another aspect of our dynamic widget system is that we can turn off specific widgets when, depending on what you're looking at. So if you've got your Moby glass open, it can hide a lot of the widgets, maybe except for the node. I like the new Moby. Oh yeah, see this is safe. So it's not oxygen. It's not that, that that doesn't register as like as like how much air you have left. It's just if your ox what you're breathing is safe or not, or like how much oxygen is in an area. Maybe that would also make sense. If you were really high up, you'd have less oxygen, or there would be less oxygen because like people who climb mountains and tall buildings, and if you're flying at like high altitudes, you need to bring your own on on air like your own oxygen with you because it, it, there's less of it up there naturally. So. Uh, that's the uh, that's the oxygen itself, yeah. And then this is just as this is safe. So notifications. If you're looking at a kiosk, maybe we just want to show the control hints on the right hand side, and everything else can be easily hidden. So with the visor, we can now customize the content that you see depending on the helmets you're wearing. And what this new dynamic region gives us beyond 323 will be allowing artists to style things based on different visors and different missions and different purposes. The code for the different styles of manufacturers, etc., is in now. You can see the potential of having different visors for different helmets for these different roles. That's great, but one of the things we really need is customizable like lighting or like, like coloring, because I, I, this is where I'm going to get on my soapbox. Accessibility is important. I understand that gameplay, some people will argue that gameplay is king and, you know, you shouldn't dumb down a game to make it more accessible to more people, which I agree with. But when it's just a UI issue, when you can just change the color of the UI and it can improve the experience for people who are red, green, colorblind, or, you know, people like me who have astigmatisms and other kind of things, just little tweaks here and there just to make it so you can read stuff easier and don't hurt yourself. It's not that hard to do, and they still haven't done that after several years. So there needs to be some changes there. Um, and I, I, I only fear that what they're doing is with the ability to have custom UI for different manufacturers, that the manufacturer's color 
will be matter more than the customization of, of that UI element because they want to make sure that the colors line up perfectly, which I get, but at the same time, please. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's definitely a question that I would be, I would ask it myself in in the chat is how are you going to deal with red green colorblind accessibility and and other kind of low like harder to see kind of stuff. So the next thing is to get the artist onto the job really. In three twenty three, the only specialized visor is going to be the combat visor that comes with the dynamic crosshair. But you can expect us to continue iterating on these visors in future patches. I hate that thing. So, the loot screen builds on a lot of work that we've done in the personal inventory see, over the past few years. This is a problem, right here. <laughs> Red and green. <laughs> I mean, you get it. Enemy over here, you down here. You can kind of kind of get it yourself, but like, it's not the only issue. So, the loot screen builds on a lot of work. Also, this is awful, but that's probably just an error on their part. We've done in the personal inventory over the past few years. It's a new UI it's just... giving the player the possibility to just pick up stuff on the go. The existing personal inventory can be a bit cumbersome when trying to pick up ammo in a firefighter and things like that. So the new loot screen aims to address those issues. Now, when the player goes over to a body or a box, it, it can quickly press F and this will bring up the new load screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the players on the bottom. You can easily swap between both and equip things from what you're looting by just clicking or clicking and dragging. This screen is a more simplified version of the inventory. is to make the experience for the player to be quicker. We also now have a separate section for gun? armor, which wasn't considered. Experience for the player to be quicker. This? No, that's a scalpel. It's just a different, uh, different, um, a different, uh, what is it called? Skin for the scalpel. Talking about. Goes over to a bot. New UI, giving the yeah, player the, the possibility to. Back to actually back um, back it up a little bit. That's an LH. Yeah, these are all these are all. That, that's not. That's just the. It's not a new gun. I think that's a. That's the submachine gun from Klaus and Werner. Over the past few years, it's a new UI giving the player the. Let me step back a little bit. Yeah, scalpel permafrost sniper rifle is what that is. Just skinned of a scalpel. The possibility to just pick up stuff on the go. The existing personal inventory can be a bit cumbersome when trying to pick up ammo in a firefighter and things like that. So, oh, is the loot screen only on combat-oriented helmets? That'd be interesting to know. I don't think I don't think that's what they said. I think it's just the 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 the, the thing. But yeah. The new loot screen aims to address those issues. Now when the player goes over to a body or a box, it, it can quickly press F and this will bring up the new loot screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the players on the bottom. You can easily swap between both and equip things from what you're looting by just clicking or clicking and dragging. This screen is a more simplified version of the inventory is to make the experience for the player. So this is fine. Like I like the little, the, the subtle bounce back and forth. I, you need to be able to have the color changes because like this, you can't see them very well. Like I like the, the blur effect works, but it's just not quite there. Things need to be a little bit bolder and you definitely need to uh, none of this streaking stuff. Like, I don't want to look like I'm driving in the middle of the night every time I look at the screen. It's like, like this right here is like a little blurry to me. It's harder for me to actually see that. So like, like get rid of that ghosting stuff. Like I get, you're trying to make it like stand out a little bit more, but it just looks awful. I have to be quicker. We also now have a separate section for armor, which wasn't a consideration for Squadron 42. You'll just click a button and it'll take you to a new page and you can swap your armor with who you're looting nice. and see everything that they had equipped. 
We also have some contextual actions in the loot screen. If you are looking for ammo for a specific weapon, you can hover over that weapon and it will show you any magazines or attachments that will fit that weapon. You can then quickly loot those or attach the weapon attachments using that menu. So when the player hovers a specific item, this will appear a tooltip that will tell you the available actions and that will include, for example, a single click to equip, a shift left, left click to store it. We've also added a button to the loot screen to swap between that and the existing personal inventory view. The inventory will stay, it's not going anywhere, uh, and is more for your management. So what you're seeing here is still, uh, the visuals are still for Squadron. We are planning to do a PU version and that will come for this release. Okay. All right. And our team's last big addition to... So far, it's good. It looks good, at least in practice. It's just the visual needs to get rid of the ghosting. It's so awful. And they need to give us options for different colors or high contrast. There's there needs to be more stuff. And this isn't a new thing. This has been something that's that Star, Star Citizen has struggled with for as long as Star Citizen has been a game. Uh, people have com complained about a lot of the issues because it's just hard to see. The CIG seems to focus more on like rule of cool and like uh, visual kind of flair rather than usability and you know i get the appeal but also if you're gonna go with that you're gonna have to risk you know have to, you're gonna have to kind of eat some humble pie and just go listen yes we want to make sure that more people can purchase the game and enjoy it and not get a headache watching our aui screens so here's here's the ability to turn off these features or to change some of these features so that it can be seen it may look worse to you but it's better for the people who can play it so 323 is an updated shopping experience. So today when you're looking to buy an item, you look at that item and you see a flat piece of UI on the left hand side of the screen. You then need to interact with this item and if the price is high enough, it will take you to a confirmation screen in the Mobi Glass that shows you more information where you can confirm if you want to proceed with the transaction. With the new Mobi Glass being introduced, we took this as an opportunity to remove the old confirmation screen and update some of the UI around the shopping experience. We really wanted to sell the idea like of the AR lens actually putting things out in the world. Don't mind that. You will see the overlay around the item with basic information. Uh, you will see the price of the item and your balance. We're no longer going to be directly interacting with the item to purchase it. We'll now have hotkeys. It's almost like CIG took a look at what AR technology actually is in the 21st century and used that. Oh, I hate the inner thought system. I'm glad it's dead. It will be displayed on the card. You need to press these hotkeys for a certain amount of time in order to complete the transaction. The process will happen in the background, and then you will get a notification if it was successful. So you can hey. see now in work. <laughs> It's a him, Mario. <laughs> Mario's looking swag. World, you have this interface with the information you need to see. Okay, do I want to buy this thing? You just interact with it, buy the thing, and you're done. The default key for buying will be B for buying. Um, but if you don't like it, you can go to settings and then change the key binding, like any other bindings in in our game. The same will be true for renting if. It is a vehicle or something that can be rented. We also have the concept of quick buy currently, which just allows you to grab the item immediately. So the main reason that we made this change is because with the new visors, we have redesigned some of the apps that you have, like shown on the visor and shown on the Mobi Glass. We had the choice to either port the existing confirmation screen over directly as it is with all of the, its information, or update the experience to something more fitting with our game now. Obviously, we still have the shopping terminals, so if you want to buy things in bulk, that's probably where you go. But when you're just picking that one thing up quickly, like that. I'm looking for the evolution of that. So for anyone playing Star Citizen, 323 is going to mean a new visor and HUD experience that's just going to look way better than before. It's going to feel more diegetic. It's been about polishing and improving and iterating on what we've already got in the universe. It's going to have the new looting system, which is going to make the flow so much quicker for you, as well as the new chopping system, looking nicer, being faster. 
we're hoping to provide a better experience to all the players so they have a more enjoyable experience with the game. And I'm really proud of the work that everyone on this team has been doing. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the updated visor system will unlock artists to explore different interface stylings and designers to create more function-driven apps for the different manufacturers and purposes of helmets. That the new Squadron 42 looting screen is being adapted to the multitude of uses exclusive to the persistent universe. And how the new shopping interface aims to make finding and buying that item or vehicle in-game easier and more intuitive than ever before. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. And we'll see you all here next week. Look at this stupid meme. Every time I do it makes it seem <laughs> like my hiring was so bad. And all I did was make Chris Roberts mad. <laughs> and this is why I screwed up. <laughs> this next line just up, up. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, what well, is what happens when you give a bunch of creatives power to create? <laughs> uh, all right. So Uh, so, overall, the look is good. It is clean. It all has similar UI outputs. It looks unified. The freaking inner thought system is dead, thank God. I know it's still going to be for the dialogue system, and I guess it kind of works for dialogue. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to complain about it too much, but everything else is that you do on a regular basis because you're not going to use dialogue a ton. Uh, in Star Citizen, at least. It, it, it's fine. It's like, like everything else is good for what it is. The ghosting's gotta go. Like, that's just awful. And this is someone who doesn't have much of a problem with astigmatism. Like, I do have it, and I definitely have, like, like glasses, but I can, I can play games without my glasses. Like, I can do things without my glasses. I, I can almost drive without my glasses. I just can't quite see far enough um, without, like, really focusing. And that can be a problem because you're if you try to focus on the the stuff it's going to cut your eyes are going to try to like adjust to the to the, to the um to the ghosting and it doesn't really so and then when it finally kind of catches on your your brain kind of hurts is what it is like it makes your eyes kind of strain a little bit which is not something you want to do with people who have eyes like myself so CIG please accessibility please remove that feature or make it optional so that we can remove it so that we can see it and of course RGB RGB, uh, or art red, green, color, I don't want to put too much on a soapbox about that sort of thing. It's just more of a, those I are things that need to be done. Thing. Like the overall design is good. I like it. I like the subtle tilts that the, you can do with some of those, like the, 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 the looting screens and stuff like that. Those are great. And the idea that we're having manufacturer specific HUDs is fantastic. I'd love to see the, the personality of FPS equipment as much as the personality of, uh, of ships and such like that. Amazing. But please think about accessibility in the future CIG. This is they were beyond the point of of you should know this. You do know this. We've talked about this as a community so many times. Now that you have all these tools in there, please make it avail available. But I, as always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this kind of thing, come join us live where we uh, watch ISC. We look at the latest uh, news. The other news we talked about was Fauna in-game, uh, confirmed for 3.23, so it was pretty cool. Uh, we also talk about random stuff. We we talked about Darth Jar Jar for this, too. <laughs> so we'd love to, I'd love to see you come down and join us at twitch.tv slash theastropub, youtube.com slash theastropub. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Is this fine? Am I being a fine little baby that I should get better? Or, or it, should CIG start to kind of fix some of these problems? Let me know in the comments. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black.
Did I forget to turn off the sound effects? Because I can't actually hear them myself. I'm going to have to redo the exit, the outro. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna redo the outro real quick because I can like cut it. I turn off the sound, by the way. That was ISC for uh, March 28th, 2024. I will say overall, I'm okay with the design. The design looks good. I like the, even the subtle tilt with the with the, with the, the loot screen. Uh, everything looks unified in terms of the, the overall aesthetic. Looks great. And I'm glad that the, the, the inner thought system is dead. Thank God that thing needed to die in a fire. Everyone hated it and finally, I think Chris, who was the person who came up with the idea, it's a long story for that one, uh, finally admitted it's bad. <laughs> we need to change it. So thank you, Chris, for changing your mind on that. It really does mean a lot to people who were having, it just, just was not user friendly. Uh, making it cleaner and easier to access is a good thing. Now, along those same lines, please remove the ghosting. Please allow us to customize the screen so that you people who are red, green, colorblind or people with stigmatism like myself or people who have harder, harder to see. We don't strain our eyes looking at the new stuff. That ghosting is awful. It is. It's it's just bad and it makes it look bad because it's so subtle. Like you don't really notice it until you focus on it. And then you go, oh, I see why my brain hurts. And it's not fun to play, you know, because you want us to play hours and hours of time into into Star Citizen, which is fine. So maybe you don't want to remove it entirely. I get it. If But if CIG is to do something, I'd really love for them to be able to turn that off as an accessibility feature or to change the um, the colors of the loot screens and the, the HUD. So you, you can, you know, so people who are red, green, colorblind can just adapt to it. I know it may not be aesthetically pleasing and it may not fit in with with the what you're looking for, but you're also should be thinking about your consumers and the people who are playing your game. And this has been a long time coming. Now that you have all these systems in place, it's great. Please make that a priority for everybody's sake. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, am I just being a big cry whiny little baby? Uh, am I being a, a big bitch boy who should just grow up and deal with it? Uh, or should they fix some of these problems? Uh, and of course, join us live, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub, youtube.com slash the Astro Pub live. Um, we, we're, we do well, like a lot of different things. We just talked about Fauna uh, uh, in Star Citizen, which is renounced for 3.23. Uh, we've talked about uh, lore, you know, new updates to lore and other, other things. And uh, we even go off on a tangent. <laughs> we talked about Darth Jar Jar for a long time too. So it's a good time. Come join us, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Love to have you here. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. There you go, I didn't fuck it up. And then you got your you got your fun button back. You huge phony. <laughs>
take a walk real quickly. Enjoy your fun button. Everybody you know, enjoy, in this dog enjoy it for so long, though, because I have cooldowns on them now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Drugs. To democracy! I fly. I'm pilot. I'm just an old fashioned cowboy. Fuck this shit, I'm out. I love democracy. Weapons free, y'all. To democracy! I'm just an old fashioned cowboy. Everybody and his dog calls himself an outlaw. To democracy! I'm just an old-fashioned cowboy. Good news, 
lose everyone. Two words. Distress bacon. Fuck this shit, I'm out. I'm fly. I'm pilot. Weapons free, y'all. I love democracy. Hello, I like money. Everybody in his dog calls himself an outlaw. I'm just an old-fashioned cowboy. Two words. Distress and bacon. Back. We turned off your fun button. <sighs> All right. Because, uh, as tradition, for those of you who don't know, I paint miniatures. I'm a miniature hobbyist, mostly with Warhammer and Warhammer, like, like Games Workshop accessory stuff. I do have some Star Citizen stuff and some other stuff, but uh, I've been playing some Warhammer with the family, with Cam. And uh, because the Tau have just had their codex release and I'm a big mecha fan, um, I have a Tau army. And so I've had some Tau that have been sitting around unpainted for a while and I decided to sit down and actually um, paint them. <laughs> so this is the first Tau battle suit I have painted in a long time. I'm gonna have to turn off the green screen. I'm gonna ruin the immersion chat, hold on. There you go, chat. <laughs> Ruining your immersion. Not hell divers. If I had, if there were hell diver minis, I'd be buy, I'd be buying them and paint them, right? So, but yeah. It actually, it actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Uh, in fact, I'm not quite fully done with it either because I still need to get the knee pads to uh, go through. I need to, the highlights aren't completely finished yet. It's good enough for government work kind of thing, but. Uh, I'm definitely going to go back and work on that. And I also sort of have a solution to the uh, drones thing. One of the things in game is that the drones for Tau have become sort of icons. They're not really gameplay thing anymore. So what I did is I magnetized a bunch of drone parts. And now I can know what drone is with which unit. Because it is... Here. So I can like pull this off. And back on. This is a shield you uh, uh magnets. Who am I playing the game with? With my wife. She has a sister's army and a harlequin's army, but they removed harlequins as a unique unit so far, so she's very mad about that. Um, she she finished painting them, and then they removed them from the codex, and she's like, ah, fuck you. Uh, and then there's... Um, I'll check it out at some point there, Omega. I've got so many minis that I gotta paint, I'm, I'm not bothering getting new stuff. There's a new Halo... Uh, mini game that's come out 
because they it's a skirmish game. They have they 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 talked about doing a Halo um, tabletop battle game back in the day, and Halo's perfect setting for that. And uh, they backed out. <laughs> three four three said nah. So instead, they're doing a skirmish game with with Spartans because they're obsessed with Spartans, and it's like, give me ODSTs, <laughs> god damn it. Yes, I did see the Def Cop with the, with the, the Orca solution that bro broke in the flight stand. That was amazing. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't destroy the models when you play. Uh, you just remove them from the game board. Yes, YouTube got to talk and you didn't, Aimless. That's how that works. Because YouTube doesn't have a fun button that they spam. For now. I saw Dune Lurk. It looks, it looks pretty good in terms of like the games. In terms of games. So that's really it. Uh, I mean, there was some, there was some, there was like a, an update, like a, like a, a secret Galactopedia update. I guess it's not so secret. It happened two days ago. Did you, what happened to your, your, your what happened to your, 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 your website? See, there we go. Okay. Okay, so this is from March. The Bennu Protectorate got a full article. We'll look through that. The Tiber system, the tomb, Caliban system. Yeah, so just mostly the Caliban system and the Tiber system. Both are red systems. They're both controlled by the Vanduul. So they probably just updated some of the stuff there, some more, more detail. All right. Because the Bennu do not keep historical records, it's unclear in their history... Uh, in their history, they formed the Protectorate. The earliest known iteration of the BP was encountered in 1924 in the Tree System upon Banu Jian first contact. At that time, the Banu had already settled in multiple planetary systems and were utilizing the Protectorate Council and the Gathering as a method of large-scale management. The BP has continued to operate in the same manner since that time. Given the current consensus among xenoanthropologists that the Banu people are originally from the ocean world of Bacchus II, it is speculated that the earliest form of the BP uh, of the BP emerged based on alliances between the small island nations that make up the majority of the land on the planet. I still think that the Banu are coral people. I think they're they're sentient coral masses. Everyone's like they're tree. I'm like they look like coral. With the different color schemes that they have and stuff like that, they, they look like coral. And coral are living creatures that are kind of like just giant living creatures. So, a sentient, mobile coral. Uh, government. Each planet, state, and city state within BP is governed by one or more political bureaucratic sulis. And political and bureaucratic sulis that plan and uh, plan the tasks needed to keep their locales. Um, operating smoothly, and then execute them by forming contracts with Sulis that perform said tasks. These include energy production and distribution, water service, sewage processing, road maintenance, garbage collection, and many others. Compensated for their work via a complex system involving bartering combined with monetary payment, these Sulis hold a great deal of power and are known to be with withdraw their service if they encounter unfavorable conditions. Conversely, they gain a reputation for operating in bad faith. They may, uh, may, may uh, face retaliation. Oh, if they gain a reputation for, for operating bad faith, they're just straight up saying, yeah, they fucking suck. <laughs> Fuck the government. <laughs> they may face retaliation from other Sulis. Although some are truly independent groups of Banu that operate in their own unique manners, this method of governance is the most common one used in the BP. Similar to the Sulis that operate planet states, the Protectorate Council ca uh, takes care of the tasks necessary to keep Banu society functional from the top down. These include distribution of shared currency, the management of inner civilization trade, the negotiation of treaties, 
or inter-civilization inter trade, negotiation of treaties, and other minister, ministerial activity. Banu who want a seat on the Protectorate must purchase it directly from their predecessors. In some cases, they are hand-picked for the purchase of the seat, usually from among the non-Protectorate affiliate Esosuli who attend the gathering. The most successful members of the Protectorate are those who know how to balance the pursuit of their own agenda with the necessity of working with others to achieve a common goal. The gathering is the most important political event in the BP. Generally held as an, as, at a, at a, on an ad need basis, it tends to occur two or three times per standard Earth year, although sometimes multiple years can pass between meetings. Issues that will affect the entirety of the BP are presented and debated at gatherings. As such, their valuation of their shared currency, the re renegotiation of trade agreements, the reassessment of laws and customs, the state of BP's borders, and others. Grievances between Sulis are also aired and resolved in the interest of preventing armed conflict from breaking out between the planets and city-states. Not gonna lie, the Banu not writing down their own history is both the dumbest thing a species can do, but also great world building by CIG, because there's an absurd amount of stuff that is lost to human history because no, uh, because it was common enough knowledge that no one bothered to write it down, and the only people who could read were the, were the elite. So who the fuck would write it down? Why would you give a shit? Most of it is oral history, but the Banu don't even bother passing down oral history because it's inefficient. Who gives a fuck? about what happened five years ago, all that matters is me, who I, because, like, Penny will only live, like, 50 years. With incredibly short lifespans. So, like, even humanity, like, today, has a longer lifespan than, than the Banu. <laughs> like, the Banu reached middle age at 30. It's 40 years? I have to look up the, 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 the details, but I'm pretty sure, like, it's, yeah, it's very short. It's, Uh, there's nothing there. I'm pretty sure I saw someone say there was a 50-year-old Banu. I'm looking through some of the stuff I can find, some of the sources I have. Look at the language guide. Yeah, nope, here we go. This is where I say, I'm sorry. Uh, what did you say, Omega? The average lifespan is 50 standard years. So, so what was that, Omega? What was that, about 40 years?
Come for the king and don't miss. <laughs> yes, I did make that wrong. I do admit that I did make it wrong in the past. I thought it was actually younger. I thought it was 30 years. And uh, I was corrected by jail back then. And I was like, oh, really? And I think I even get corrected on that one. So I am not always correct. Do not always go by me. Always look it up. I've heard Lord Team say 40 on ISC. It may also be... be uh, uh, it may also be... Uh... uh Flexible. It may be one of those things that changed over time because, you know, as Star Citizen's lore is also in, in uh, Alpha, funny enough. So things do change, especially since that sort of thing doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> so let me show you about, about time. So Banu time is based off of beats. And so the, the a beat is um, five seconds. They're different, different things. Now, the thing is, is that all of their their beats are timed so that they're all about the same. They all have a, a significant thing. So, like, all their words for different things, like 100 beats, 100, 1,000 beats, so on and so forth, all correspond with a specific um, event in the Banu culture, which is good writing because it's, like, trying to flesh out, like, why do we have time? Time matters because, yeah, it's, we have to track our, our like, sun. Um... But it also, we, we, we build our life around, around, uh, around time. Like, how many, how many hours of sleep do you need a night? Eight. Do you, does everyone need eight hours of sleep? No, of course not. Because biology is different. But the standard is eight. And how long is eight hours? Oh, it just happens to be the entirety of the night period. Usually when it gets dark, or when it gets light, is about eight hours. I think it's like more like 12 hours, but, you know, give or take a little bit, but generally speaking, you're, you're covering most of the evening period, if you say eight hours, so. Um, so, like, a, a, a hundred beats is a Banu nap. A thousand beats is, a, uh, is uh, the big midday meal, so it's like lunch. Seven hours is half a shift, so it's five, five thousand half a shift. Uh, thousand, thousand, thousand uh, ten thousand beats is four, is one work shift. About f uh, fifty thousand beats is uh, about three days. Um, uh, a new week is about a thousand, a uh, hundred thousand beats. A million beats is uh, about a season or like a contract period. Um, 10,000 beats, or is it 10,000? 10 million. 10 million, right? Yeah, 10 million. 10 million beats is a, the Banu year. Um, and then 6,320 is one human year, uh, or 6 million, so it's a little off. 50 million is about eight years, which is when in Predacent Sharp, so when you reach 50 million beats, you start your journey as an apprentice. And when you reach 100 million beats, you're at you're at your, your apprenticeship ends. Notice how they're all their life milestones too. When you start getting to the larger ones, 200 million beats is about 32 years, which is when you usually get out of your first contract around 32 is when you typically leave the, your first Suli as a fully vested Banu. It's when you usually purchase your freedom from your Suli or, or repay your debt to the Suli. And you can either leave the Suli or join the Suli as a uh, with an, under a new contract, um, and then forty three years is retirement. So two million seven hundred and fifty million two hundred and seventy five million beats is your retirement. About forty most Banu retire at about forty three years divestment. Um, and then three uh, three million three hundred million is about forty eight years, which is like that's really like when you stop doing stuff. Um, Four four hundred million is sixty three years, which is an elderly Banu, and uh, a billion beats is about 
Uh, 158 years. No man who lives this long. I like that little thing. Compared to humans, human, men who don't live that long. The average lifespan is about 50 standard Earth years. That might be why they embrace the work hard, play hard mentality. They don't have time to waste. A Banu oh. is like, we got shit to do. We're going to work 14 hours straight with no breaks. Get this shit done. And when our shift is over, you and I are going to go to a bar and get fucking crunked. We're going to get bl obliterated, blasted. We're going to be, drink so much we don't remember what we did the entire day. And then you're going to wake up and do it all again. Because fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the drink that makes you stop feeling feelings. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely see some Japanese uh, like influence in Banu. Um, a lot of their palate and their kind of their uh, style feel very um, feel like like have like the, the kind of Japanese work ethic kind of kind of uh, the, like the salaryman ep ethic. But it's it's obviously not just Japanese. It's also heavily influenced by things like, um, gosh, what am I trying to, th to think about? Um, I think Chinese China. There's Chinese some Chinese elements, probably some African elements. And the original idea was very Bedouin, and that kind of works with Bedouin kind of culture because Bedouin culture isn't just one culture. It's dozens, hundreds, thousands of different tribes which live in the the you know these regions these harsh regions of the desert uh and each of these these tribes or these like clans almost are completely different from one another so they're similar and they all have the same culture but they're not necessarily the same and that's kind of how banu were originally supposed to be I think the difference is that Banu have much more egalitarian relationships within within individual Sulis. Everything is a contract with the Banu. Everything. Life is contracts. And everyone's trying to negotiate around them. But once you're part of a contract, once you've been put into a part of a Suli, you are their best fucking friend. Everything is everything is business war until the business deals are signed. Then everyone's a family. Like that's the way it works. Seven years of retirement? Yeah. You, you don't have much years. Banu, happiness and wage slavery. <laughs> like, the comparison to the Ferengi isn't unfair, but I think a Ferengi wouldn't have as much fun as a Banu does. Because they're so obsessed with profit. The Banu are not obsessed with profit. They're obsessed with perfection. They want to do really good. They want to make really cool, good shit. They got this kind of magpie thing going for them where they really like unique stuff, shiny. Uh, the joke is they like shiny shit. Um, but yeah, and uh, like like a, a Banu, there might be a, a gourmand Banu that'll try to eat everything in the universe because the Banu will eat everything. And I mean everything. Famously, the first Banu who ever contacted humanity, Jerry, who's just known as Jerry, because uh, he kept trying to tell his to say, my name is Jerry. And they're like, Jerry? The, he's like, cool, that's my name now. I'm Jerry now. It's, it's just how he worked. He was just so happy to have discovered a new species. He's like, I'm Jerry now. That's just me. See, I'm Jerry. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, um, when, when they they try to figure out what Jerry would eat, they came in and put a bunch of stuff on plates and like a bunch of stuff that was in packages and stuff like that. And he just, you know that scene in Futurama where um, where like they, they, they go back in time, that's an episode in Futurama where they go back in time and Fry becomes his own grandfather, um, where they capture Zoidberg and they're trying to figure out what he would eat. And they put out a bunch of like food in front of him. And he's like, oh, a buffet, but I didn't bring my, 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 my credit card. And they were like, uh, it's free. And he just goes crazy. Like, 
That's what Jerry does. Jerry just sits there and goes, mm. <laughs> ooh, a feast. And then just starts eating things. Like he eats the food. He eats the wrappers that come with the food. He eats the plates. He eats everything. <laughs> everything before him is food. So he eats it all. Because the Banu have, don't really have a taste buds. They have, their taste buds are different. They much more, their, their, their cuisine is much more about texture and uh, like flavor and texture, but it's, it's like, because their palate, they can eat like harder things than everybody else. They can eat things that other people can't or like other species can't. They'll like, they'll eat the food and the plate it came on. And they'll, they'll have a comment about the plates take texture and taste. <laughs> hey, where'd the spanner go? Benu burps. <laughs> I'm sure there are things that Banu are poisonous to, but I, I don't know if a Banu's found one yet. <laughs> you may be a slave, but it'll be like being family. I mean, family in the sense that, like, and I think I think the term slavery is a little rough with a Banu because they don't really participate in slavery. I mean, they do. There's definitely Banu slavers, like 1,000% Banu slavers. But in their culture what they would consider, what, what you might say, oh, that's slavery. That they, they turn around and say something to the effect of, don't you have children working in your factories making cheap goods? Are they not slaves? They're just Suli. You just don't treat them as better, as good as we do. That was that would be their, their response. You have children make, working in sweatshops. The difference between you and me is that I actually raised those children and taught them and gave them everything they needed to and then gave them a job that they could work at and then they could leave it. Yeah, it's more like indentured servitude. It's much more like the, like a guild. I would compare it to like the old guild systems where you would, uh, you'd become an apprentice at eight and you would, uh, you'd learn your trade and then when you reached your teenage years, you'd go off and start your own, you you know, you'd, you'd start your own kind of trade and eventually join the guild and it, it's, it's like you have to kind of prove yourself. It's very similar to that. <laughs> yeah, slavery is banned in the UEE. It's 100% banned. Except for Hurston, because Hurston gets around it, because Hurston is always the exception to the rule. And when you're 30, you die from a cold. Or if the flu. I, I am very defensive of the Banu because they're my favorite alien species. Not because I think they're the best alien species, but because they're the alien species that you're like, just can't stay mad at you. You know? They're the kind of people who will sell your kidney and then drink with you the next day. And just not even complain, complain about it. You're just like, you just, got, you just got fucked over on a bad deal, my man. You got to be better at the, the deal making. Let me let me buy you a drink and make you tell you why you where you fucked up. Like, like that kind of thing. Like I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not signing any deals around a Banu, but I'll party with them. <laughs> and they have such a, they have such a pragmatic view of life, the Banu do. Like there's a great article in the lore about someone trying to figure out why does Luminalia last as long as it does? I think it's like 10,000 beats. It lasts a week in um, in Banu time, I think. Well, it's 10,000 beats is the right one. I think it's 100,000 beats. Yeah, it, it might be like 100,000 or about 50,000 or something like that. There's a specific number of beats it lasts, but it's it's very specific that beat, and I think it's I think it's uh, 50,000 beats. And when um, when she goes around to all of her Banu friends, like this, the, the when the because uh, it's written as like a as if it's a, uh, a news article, and it's like she's trying to write a news article, trying to find out the, the secret behind it. She went to her Banu friends and goes like, "Why is it fifty thousand beats?" 
and they'd be they'd hold up the the lantern and be like, "Cause that's how much oil the lantern has." Like, yeah, but why does the lantern have fifty thousand beats? Because that's the size of. It's that's how the size of the lantern. It's big. It's that size because it holds oil for fifty thousand beats. Yeah, but what's the cultural significance of the fifty thousand beats? Because that's how much oil the lantern has. <laughs> B E E T S, I think. Actually, no, it might be B E A T S. Uh, yeah, B E B E A, like beat, like beats by Dre. Yeah, B E A T S. Oh yeah, it's that that's the whole that's that's the art what the article is about. It's it's her her saying like the Banu it just lasts as long as the the the, 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 the there's oil in the lamp. The, the lamp doesn't necessarily lamps are not universally created because each each Suli creates their own lamps. So they have an idea, but they don't they don't go off a standard template. So uh, it'd be like it's, to understand something like to understand this is like the the defender and the merchantman they're standardized for the human market. Banu defenders and merchantmen might be very different in terms of their size, their weapon loadouts, what they can carry. They might be completely different depending on which Suli is building it because they don't give a fuck about standardization. They only care about the best version of whatever. Now that tends to be ended up being standardized because each Suli is going to try to build the best version ever and they all kind of think that this is the best version ever, but there might be somebody who builds some slightly different modification version of the Banu, of the Defender kind of stuff, so. Um, I love Lamp. Uh, without recording histories of Athlean Concept, we don't know if they ever didn't record history. They may have at one point recorded history in their culture. They just stopped doing it. We don't know why. We just know they don't do it now. Do they trade into an FTL drive? We don't know. The earliest contact that we have of written records is when the Jean first made contact with the Banu, which was um, 1924 AD. Ni 1924 BCE. Or, or not BCE, CE. At that time, they already had, um, they already had planets and stuff like that. Banu created hip hop. Yes, that's that's what I said. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, there's no standardization. It's just, and there wasn't even no standard date when you celebrated Luminalia or Tifiki of Hunga, um, the 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 glow festival, and. Uh, there was just no standardized. It's humans who took it and then figured out the vessels that were given to them, the the glow, the 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 the, 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 the lamps, the Banu lamps, and they retrofit retroactively built their own. And that's just so happened that those lamps held fifty thousand beats of oil. And humans standardized the, the tradition, and the Banu just said, oh. Makes sense. Why not? <laughs> they are such not, they just don't give a fuck. Like humans do something, they're like, yeah, we'll do it with you. They're like, you invented it. Like, cool. <laughs> like the Banu started celebrating Luminalia at the same time humans did because it's like, hmm, good for business. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> I love the menu now. I did before, but now I like them. <laughs> I still do now. Yeah. Neat. Uh, is a band immersion used in Luminalia celebration? It can be. The only thing you need for Luminalia is the, the glow lamp. It's just a lamp you hang. When you hang it, it means that you're celebrating Luminalia. It's kind of like a, a signal that says, hey, I want a party. Because <laughs> when you hang it and other band who see it, you can walk up to them and the band who are like, cool, come, come on by. It doesn't even matter if you're part of the same Suli. You can just come hang out with them. Um, and uh, the, the key is that you have to give them uh, presents. So like they require a present as your entry fee for coming there. It's okay if you don't have a present. They have presents you can buy from them to then give back to them. <laughs> They'd be insulted if you said you, you, were, you had to pay for this, this privilege. Are you kidding me? No, they're, they're, they're opening up their hearts. Oh, the least you could do is give them a little gift. <laughs> They'll just sell the UE a live Vandal one of these days. You don't think this UE haven't cop captured live Vandal before? <laughs> they have. They just found them very uncooperative when it comes to negotiation or it comes to uh, to, to interrogations. The Banu are such a weird, chill species. <laughs> I love them for that. They're as likely to sell to 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 uh, dope you up and steal your kidneys as they are to like sell you the cure to a to a uh, to a debilitating disease. Or just give it to you because they think it's cool. Why not? <laughs> if they think there's an advantage of giving you the cure so that you don't die, so they can get something else. They'll do it because they want to get on your good side. Because your local friendly Banu Suli would never use human leather. Probably. I'm gonna have to bring this up now. If you have not seen this, you have to see this. Are you tired of the pain of the drudgery of the boring ship? Are you waiting for your lucky day? Well, hello, lucky humans! It's us! Your average friendly, Banu Suli, specializing in excelling mightily, in procuring and selling of many great and amazing ships. So many good ships from alien worlds, suitable for humans. Don't go there, we'll bring them to you. Comfy human seat, not made of human. Probably, humans love breathing. Our ship's full of atmosphere, great for breathing. Your next great ship is waiting. We have it, it's right here. Come on down, today. Voted friendliest Suli, three years subsequent. Davian Four Commercial Chamber. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it.
I know that's the I, I know that's the the, uh, the just the marketing team doing that, which is uh, wah, hats off to you having fun like that. But uh, but that that just it it screams Banu. That whole thing screams Banu, and I love it. Confirm. I love breathing. <laughs> Average friendly Banu Suli. The best part about that is that's just the name of the Suli. Average friendly Banu. Suli. Oh, of course I've seen sc Scooter's ship. So you can find a, a... Oh, he did it. He he did an Aurora one. Nice. <laughs> Come on down to Bria's Breakyard. Tell him Scooter, Scooter, can't you? Good morning, Stanton. Good morning, Stanton. Knew it. This is Scooter coming to you from the beautiful Brio's Breaker Break Yard on Day. <laughs> Are you looking for a ship for your first time flyer? Then the RSI Aurora is what you need, Bo. It's got everything a first time pilot needs, like four bulldogs. A roomy bedroom, excellent field of view, and room for cargo. And Car not to mention a size 4 missile that fits perfectly. And more bumper guards than a bowling alley. So your first time flyers don't have to worry about exploding when they uh, forget to put down their landing gear. And you can even park it on its rear end for a quick escape. Now some people say the Aurora is too boring or ugly, but when you see an Aurora rising out the atmosphere with its double stacked wing silhouette, you know there's a good chance that someone is experiencing the wonderment of their first space flight, opening up a whole new world of possibilities and... Uh, you might want to run escort for any first-time pilots. All right, and today only the Aurora Lynn is 50% off. If 50. you want to take this old girl for a test flight, you just come on down. You tell Scooter Scooter sent you. Y'all have a good evening. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for watching our commercial. If you like to help support Scooter Ship Emporialman Double Dog Stand, become a YouTube member or check out our patron. Okay. I gotta, I gotta join that patron. <laughs> I haven't, but that's great. Remember, if you wanna, uh, you gotta, gotta get, leave a double dog for, uh, for Mima when you go trade at, uh, at, uh, Breers. Tell Scooter, Scooter sent you. These are great Good for... Good morning. Welcome to Scooter Shit. These are great for for TikTok, by the way. I don't know if 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 uh, if Wookie's here, but or not, because Wookie sometimes hangs out. But they should they should definitely be, be putting these on TikTok. I know, I know, it's blasphemy. These are perfect for TikTok, though. Emporium and Double Dog Stand. How can I help you? Okay, so I purchased this ship from your lot on Art Corp, and it has been an absolute nightmare. Uh, ma'am, we don't have a ship lot on Art Corp. Do you think I'm stupid? I'm pretty sure that I would know that it was your ship lot. I don't know what to tell you, ma'am. This is our only location at the moment. Okay, regardless, 
I have a problem, and you're going to fix it. Well, what's your problem? Maybe we can help fix it. This ship is broken. It won't hold my Ursa rover, and I was told that it would fit comfortably. Oh, uh, man, we, we can't make this hold no Ursa rover. It, it's too small. Then why would your employee tell me that it would? Well, the only employee I got is Billy, and he, well, he don't talk too much, and he isn't allowed in the art court due to that incident with the hologram lady. I demand a full refund for my trouble and a free ship. Ma'am, I'd love to help you, but... Stop with the ma'am. I want to talk to your supervisor. Well, I, I really don't have a supervisor. Uh, I guess you could say my Mimo's my supervisor. She sits around mostly and watches us work over there in her easy chair, scarfing down them double dogs. Yeah, let me speak to this Mima. Uh, ma'am, I, w- I wouldn't recommend that. She can be a bit ornery. Did I stutter? Supervisor, now! Uh, hey, Mimo, we got a lady down here who says she bought a broken Aurora from our Art Corp location and it's broken because it won't hold an Ursa Rover. I'll handle this. You gotta get you some lunch. Come on, Billy. Let's go get some whammers. Now, what seems to be the problem there, huh? I was sold a broken ship and I demand a full refund and a free replacement ship now. Well, bless your little heart. We'll get that taken care of for you right now. Now that's more like it. It's about time people started treating me with the respect that I deserve. In fact, let's get you fitted for a new ship, hun. If you would just step to your right a bit, so our scanners get you fitted properly. Just a bit more, hun. Right there is perfect. All right, now say no to time. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That little hussy made me spill my chili dog. Well, I guess now we got an Aurora for sale. Thank you for watching. <laughs> if you'd like to support Scooter Ship Emporium and Double Dog Stand, become a YouTube member or check out our patron. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, fucking shit. <laughs>Tell you how absolutely criminally underwatched while a wicked wookie is. Check that out. They they released um, a whole C video selling the whole C last uh, three weeks ago, so like the beginning of this month, and they have less than six thousand views. That video we just watched, Scooter vs. Karen and the, the 50% off Aurora, those both have about a little, they have under, a little around 3,000 to 3,500 views. Both. Absolute fucking, like, it's it's an abomination. Yeah. Their, their channel has 9,000 subscribers, which is fantastic, but, like... Like, I can I, let's let's see their 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 most popular video. The most popular video is how to get a free Carrick, which they released a year ago, um, and it has thirty eight thousand views. And then uh, there's a Star Citizen three eighteen fire sale one, which he which has uh, uh, thirty six thousand views. Two years ago, he did a Hammerhead uh, video, which is thirty four thousand, like. There's a couple of them which are really, really good, but most of them are over a year old and they, they are very much like 400i, Caterpillar, Carrick, uh, Redeemer, Hammerhead, 600i and Redeemer. Um, you know, Corsair. There's stuff and they were like months ago. So. 
scooter 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 needs to be needs to be the uh, scooter scooter and Mima need to run uh, uh, Brio's breakyard and Damer. When I when am I gonna make a new lore video of the Redeemer? When they fucking fix the lore of the Redeemer. Don't make me saying Mima, Mima after you, Paul. Well, Mima is gonna write some fucking lore for the Redeemer. Mima is gonna come after me. I give her double dogs. <laughs> make sure she got double dog every time I show up to sell them drugs. I mean, completely legitimate pharmaceuticals produced by orphans. My head canon is that the entirety of Scooter's uh, ship lots are uh, are just giant. Um, like money laundering scheme to sell drugs that Mima is a drug kingpin out of context double dogs Mima loves her double dogs Mima the the you know Mima of, of Scooter's Mima she loves her double dogs I'm glad to hear that execute hopefully everything's okay it's just there's just shitty timing on that one, brother. Both y'all going to the hospital while I was like in the middle of doing a bunch of stuff, so. I have. I've written an entire video on the lore of the Redeemer of my proposal, proposed lore, but yeah. Well, Mima did have a friggin' Nova tank to handle the Karen, so there may actually be money laundering involved. <laughs> I might be upgrading some stuff because I need to upgrade my uh, my current PC for my stream PC has nothing but hard drives, like physical hard drives. So I definitely need to upgrade the, that PC to, to SSDs, and I need to upgrade um, my operating system because a lot of stuff isn't working stuff um and then i also will have to uh maybe not yeah probably build a new new pc for start for uh because it's getting old i need a new graphics card for sure uh i think a lot of the stuff that i have can probably be salvaged and then my my cpu is okay for it but the graphics card definitely needs to get out there what's my thoughts on the titan suit fucking love it I, let me let me tell you about the uh, the Titan suit. All right, so the Titan suit is implied in lore to have existed before it became a military vehicle. It was like a, an industrial tool. The Titan suit was the one company we know that makes combat Titan suits is Virgil. Virgil Limited. Virgil Limited was created by refugees from Virgil. So, Virgil built, took a, a industrial suit and figured out how to equip it with sh like massive weapons 
to effectively create a mechanized Van Duel. This is likely generations after they originally founded their 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 uh, their company. The refugees from Virgil hold a fucking grudge. Like holy fuck, do they hold a fucking grudge? Like that's the the kind of long term thinking about like you know, like you 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 dishonored my grandmother seventeen generations ago. So I'm or you know your family dishonored my grandmother seventeen generations ago. So I'm going to get like exceedingly long revenge on you. <laughs> not all, not I'm gonna big big build old ne big old mech to buy uh, back. I'm going to get my descendants to build giant mechs to fight you. We're gonna hate you so much that people who've never even seen our home world will, uh, will, will hate you so much with a fiery passion that they're gonna invent new ways of killing you. That's some next level generational hate. <laughs> so the Titan suit is basically Terminator's armor? Yeah, effectively. It's like Terminator armor or power armor from Fallout um, or uh, like yeah, the, the, um, the elemental armor from MechWarrior. Yes, yes I do. All chaps are assless to execute. All chaps are assless. Uh, do you think we'll get the uh, just uh, we'll we'll get just industry ones as players or combat ones as well? I think we'll get both. Um, I, I know X has got his own um, theory that the uh, that the uh, Titan suit is uh, it's a mini boss or a boss. It, it, it's it it takes place in like there's a there's a scene with it in Squadron Forty Two, which is the reason why we don't see it in Star Citizen because it's, uh, it would spoil like a lot of the mechanics and stuff for it. I'm gonna make ass chaps. That's just, a, that those are just jeans <laughs> or like leather pants. That's all they are. Yeah, sp Spite is a, funda a fundamental force of the universe and Virgil has harnessed it. <laughs> Let's just call the crotchless pants. That's all that is. Some chaps are all ass. Giggity. I'll, I'll respond to here in a moment there, Froman. Don't worry about it. Oh, the foreman. It's the foreman. I thought it was the froman. My bad. Sausage King of Chicago. Also, the one of the characters from that '70s show.
I'm waiting for the, the ads to pass for the foreman. Abe Froman. Yeah. So when are they going to add jeans to Star Citizen? We do definitely need jeans in Star Citizen. We need kilts in Star Citizen. We need skirts in Star Citizen. We need dresses in Star Citizen. We need full-blown tuxedos in Star Citizen. We need more suit options in Star Citizen. We need, um, uh, uh like, swimsuits in Star Citizen. We need, uh, what are they called? Uh, Hawaiian shirts in Star Citizen. We need more hats in Star Citizen. We need more glasses in Star Citizen. <laughs> we need, uh, like, any kind of attire you can imagine. We need saris. We need dashikis. We need, um, you know, uh, fucking any, any type of kimono you can imagine. You know, like, all, all sorts of cultural and... Uh, like realistic clothing that exists in life, we need to have that in the game. And we need pizza too. Oh, mirror sunglasses with the UEE flags on them. You look even like this. <laughs> How about some noodles? Who wants some noodles? Oh, okay. I'm assuming the foreman is done with ads because it's been, I'm looking at my pre-roll counter and it's been a while. So I will say the foreman who asks, do you think we'll get an, it will get industry uh, ones um, as players or combat ones as well? We could possibly build them one day. You think a hundred percent, we're going to prob probably build them. And I think we're going to get both industry and combat variants. I think the reason why we don't have combat variants right now is because it's in Squadron. There's some role that they play in Squadron, which is very important, either as an enemy or as an antagonist or as an ally. And, uh, you know, they don't want to spoil that. Just like why we don't have the Idris fully in game yet. Because so. we do know, we 100% know that it's in Squadron because where it's being mentioned in terms of being developed is Squadron. And it's the same kind of thing of like, we know that the creatures that are being added in 3.23, the bird, the uh, the, cope, the cope dog and the, uh, the Martok bird are both, um, they're both uh, being, they both come from Squadron 42 because they were, they were first made for Squadron. You know all of the Star Citizen lore. I don't know all the Star Citizen lore. I just know where to find the information if I don't know it offhand. Uh, which system planet do you want to live on when 1.0 releases? Magnus. Uh, specifically Berea. Newcastle. Might be a, uh, 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 Odessa. Might be the, uh, or it's technically Odessa, but I'm sure it's Odessa. I think that's the name of the, uh, the, the, the landing zone, Odessa. New uh, Odessa Borea Magnus. Terra's gonna be cool, but Terra's gonna be super like, like. I don't know how to uh, how to say it. Terra is going to be very conformist. <laughs> it's gonna be spectacular and amazing, but it's also going to be super sleek and super clean. So that's not, that's not for everybody. I'd love to see the Drake make cutlass Titan suit simple, but functional with guns. So, um, unfortunately, I'm going to do this again because I, I, I have the chance to, because I always love showing them off. I do not think that something like this is going to be what we see with the Titan suits. Now, this is probably more akin to the Titan suit. 
compare sizes. Space range a little bit taller than your typical human, but like that's about the right the right kind of dimensions for. But um, I don't think we're gonna get weapon systems like this, where they're attached to the arms and stuff like that, or like like integrated into the into the hands. What we're going to get is um, the Titan suits are going to be carrying. You're gonna be like physically handling weapons. So like they're gonna turn ship weapons into man portable, man tech mech portable weapons. So think something more like less less mech warrior and more Gundam in terms of using weapons. <laughs> Drake Titan suit would just be guns attached to stilts. <laughs> Yeah, probably a size one or size two ship weapon. I could see them having integrated weapons, but they would be like integrated like rifles, or like machine guns or something like that. Uh, they wouldn't be like like ship weapons. And the one image we do have of 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 Titan suits. This is the one image we have of the exosuit for Star Citizen, of the Titan exosuit. Yes. We actually do know what they look like. This is this, this is probably the Zeus suit. It also kind of matches the Virgil kind of design. But notice how they're handling the weapon, like they're carrying the weapon while they're shooting it. In fact, it, it is almost, uh, <laughs> it, it is almost, uh, 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 freaking, uh, crisis suit, isn't it? <laughs> In terms of its design style, it, it even has the, the two, the two, like, back jetpacks that you would see. Well, that's kind of standard mech design, but yeah. And like a saw. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be surprised if there were like integrated weapons into it somewhere, but like I think this is probably more like it. And this is this it, while it looks pretty beefy, this isn't a size one gun. Size one guns are smaller than this. I think this is more of a size two. It's like a volt weapon. And there's probably some more bespoke weapons that they carry. So yeah, the other the other art that we have of them is like this. These are most like a concept ships, concept arts, concept art. That's mostly what we have. So you can kind of see like how you control it. It's very similar to the walkers in like a hybrid of the walkers in um, uh, Matrix and in um, uh, and uh, like the ones you, you they, they piloted the next they piloted in um, Avatar uh, with some some other aspects to it too. Kind of think of it, this is probably Virgil's development center right here, honestly. They're not really mechs. Um, even Sean Tracy. Is uh, a brother in mech kind. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of mech fans who work for CIG. Like you've got, um, I, I know at least two of the writers are big fans of mecha. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> Sean Tracy's a big mech fan. Um, uh, Freaking Will Leverett, who's one of the one of the managers for for Star Citizen, is a big mech fan. There's a lot of mecha fans in Star Citizen's development team. Uh, the one person who matters, though, in terms of uh, in terms of Star Citizen, uh, doesn't like mechs, which is Chris Roberts. I'm just like, but why? Star Citizen's perfect for it. <laughs> you know how much people would buy the game if you could run around in a mech on planet. 
I don't care if it's very effective. It would be fucking great. <laughs> and to have that experience of a, of a 10 foot tall walking behemoth just strutting through this through the countryside uh, like like you need backup. So you drop a 10 foot tall giant robot onto the ground and it just starts tearing through enemy defenses. Mwah. Mwah. You want 80s action film? That's an 80s fucking action film. <laughs> Yeah, that's why they're called exosuits. They're they're called uh, they're called um, they're exoskeleton suits. Yeah, they're they're like power armor. That's what they are. Or mini railguns, slow but powerful. I could see different weapons loadouts being like uh, like anti tank weapons, uh, anti infantry weapons. So you just carry around a gigantic fucking Gatling laser. <laughs> Um, you can, I can, I can see things like, um, uh, like, like auto cannons, beam weapons. Don't forget the dick saws. Well, CIG has said that Squadron 42 is a love letter to sci-fi of the 1980s. And you can't get more 1980s than some mecha, baby. Yeah, I get that. I get I get the joke. Of the, it's a robot jocks joke. Hey, Kinji. We're coming towards the end, though, because I, I, I we've kind of gone over everything, and I wanted to keep this a little short because uh, I do need to... Uh, I will be up early tomorrow at about um, 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, just like 6 a.m. Pacific, and I'm going to be doing a pubathon. So for those of you who don't know what pubathons are, I'm going to be broadcasting to Twitch and to YouTube, and we'll be talking about... Oh, we'll be talking about... We'll be playing Star Citizen and maybe some other games. And um, it will be a minimum of, I believe, let me, let me double check. I think it's a minimum of 12. Might be 16. Yeah, I think, I think we're doing a 16 hour stream early on. Yeah. So it's 16 hours. Um, so I'll be, I'll be going for the entirety of the day on Friday. And if we get every time someone donates or subscribes or does a thing, <laughs> donates, subscribes, gives bits, um, that, that sort of stuff on Twitch. Uh, if you're on YouTube, if you donate through a link, I, I have a link set up for YouTube there as well. Um, and uh, then, then it will extend the time period. Now, we'll still do things like the captain's table um, in our normal time. It'll be actually the new no normal time, which is uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, um, which is noon Pacific. Um, I haven't gone through all of the Vanduhel systems, no. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a moment. But... Um, yeah, so we'll still go do that regular thing, but we'll just, like, instead of stopping the stream, I'll just roll back on to streaming, you know, the gameplay again. Um, we can go up to 42 hours, which is 16 hours on Friday, 16 hours on Saturday, and um, 12 hours, I want to say, or 10 hours. Yeah, 10 hours on um, on Sunday. Is it 11 a.m.? Because 4 p.m. Pacific, or 4 p.m. Eastern is 3 p.m. Uh, Central, which is 2 p.m. Mountain, which is 1 p.m. It's 1 p.m. Um, Pacific, yeah. And the only reason why I did 42 hours is because I wasn't going to do 
16, 16, and 16 hours because I would I would break my brain. Um, so I decided to do uh, 10 or close to like 9 hours, but 10 hours would make it 42, and I thought that would be fun, so. No, 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 it's it's 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Uh, Central, but it's just, just 2 p.m. Um, uh, 2 p.m. Mountain and 1 p.m. Pacific, yeah. Is the VOD off? It's automatically off. So I got put into Twitch jail because Twitch, because I, I had something in the background and Twitch was like freaked out and was like, copyright, copyright, copyright. So they, they, I couldn't, I can't save VODs. I have to go back and turn VODs on. I have to go back and publish them after the fact if I want them to be, to be, to be viewed. And so I just kind of forget, so. Yeah, that's the joke there. <laughs> I always forget that mountain exists, so. Uh, but Kinji, yeah, I haven't gone all through all of the the uh, the Galactopedia stuff for uh, FanDuel systems, mostly because I don't think it changed that much. Like most of the stuff is the same. They may have added some more details, like the Tiber One and Tomb. Like I don't really, they overlook it, you know. Yeah, most of this stuff is stuff that's already been been released. I think a lot of this stuff is it was it may have not been fleshed out. Like Tiber, the Tiber systems lore might be not have been put into the Galactopedia, but a lot of this stuff was already there in the lore. So, oh, they just gave gave me hot crossbones here. Hot cross buns? I don't know what I don't know what that is. I've heard of it before, but Okay, free healthcare for the win. No such thing as a free lunch. Nothing is free. You have to pay for it down the line somewhere. You're just paying for it in your taxes. That's the the uh, the economics teacher in me. Uh, I it may have been an, an autocorrect or something else like that, but. Uh, Hot cross buns are a roll that looks like an Xbox logo. Okay. But we still pay less in taxes than y'all do up front. I think it generally works out that way. But it also it also depends. <laughs> depends. Um, because Americans tend to not go to the doctor as much. So like catastrophic surgery, yeah, we probably pay more than y'all. But on average basis, it's probably about the same. The biggest issue, though, is that we have to pay for more stuff. Like, God help you if you have to get an ambulance. Because they'll take you to the hospital, but they'll charge you out the ass for it. In reality, they charge you out the ass because if you have insurance, they make the insurance will pay you will pay for it. Effectively, instead of having government to paying for everything, it's an insurance company that's paying for everything. Um, and because of a lot of other fucky shit it ends up that the insurance companies are charged way more money to be able to cover the cost of people who can't pay for insurance and or can't pay for, for, for medical bills. So it ends up that people's insurance, the insurance companies takes it on the individual person. So their rates get much higher. Uh, but it really depends on you are, where you are. Like my health insurance is about 75 bucks a month. Total. And they're probably closer to 100. But that includes healthcare, eye care, 
uh, a health savings account. Like, because of the health savings account, I didn't pay a dime for this. I don't pay really for anything because I pay through the health savings account, but my employer pays into the health savings account as well as, as I do. I technically still pay for it because I paid for it, like, when I put the money in two, three years ago. But, so, it's a lot more complicated than just American Healthcare Service bad. It's like, American Healthcare Service is complicated, and it could be simpler, and it could be better, but it's not. So. Yeah, and it's absolutely awful for people who who have um, who have pre-existing conditions. Because they got absolutely hosed if you have a pre-existing condition. Do we go less because we're healthier or because we can't fucking afford it? It's because we can't fucking afford it. <laughs> Not because we're healthier. We just can't afford it, and it's too expensive. Yeah, you're rolling the dice when it comes to some of some of the places. You guys go to the hospital uh, less often, but you pay more. I haven't paid much in terms of hospital fees or anything else like that. At all. But, like, I haven't been to the hospital once in my life, knock on wood, for serious injuries. I've been to, you know, medical care facilities. We have a lot of, like, clinics. Uh, that's one of the things that the United States has a lot of, is we have a lot of clinics. So, like, places where you can get pretty much everything a hospital does, but very little. You should go there for, like, doctor's notes or small, like, illnesses and stuff like that. And they're staffed by maybe one doctor, but they usually have a bunch of registered nurses on board. So, like I said, it's a complicated situation. Americans' healthcare system is bad, but it's not like, uh, there's, it's often portrayed as, like, the devil itself. It's like, no, it, there's a reason behind why it exists the way it does, and it could improve and should improve. The problem is, is that the people who make the most money are the people who are paying politicians to not make it improve. Yeah, it's, it's, the problem is, is that the edge cases which the edge cases, rather than the, the vast majority of people, get absolutely hosed. And if you just happen to be an edge case, you're fucked. And with things like the rise of diabetes in America, where it's becoming a very serious problem, um, the fact that Americans don't walk anywhere, so we don't have uh, proper, like, like, uh, uh, physical education, or even just like, like, like general health, like, uh, like, I would say that almost certainly European foods, for instance, probably have much higher caloric intake than American foods do. But European foods, or Euro European cities are designed for you to walk to your grocery store. <laughs> you can't walk anywhere in America. Like, unless you're downtown, you're not walking for anywhere. Also, edge cases are like the entire population below the middle classes. Yeah, not really. I think that's an over-exaggeration. I'm not saying there isn't a big problem. And I'm not saying it's not, we're not still, we're still not talking about like millions upon millions of Americans. But America is like the third largest populated country in the world. So...
They soul crush tonight's Evo build. Maybe tomorrow. See how you put in those 12 hour work days. Uh, I mean, welcome to Evo builds. <laughs> Europeans walk more slash active. Have you seen um, seen many French, French fat French people? No, that's my point. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if we're going to get one this Friday. We might, but... Is Ahmed still at CIG? Yep. <laughs> Who do you think's doing most of the server meshing testing? <laughs> Hidden <laughs> peas, unsung heroes, yeah. Six phases in ILW, maybe t May 20th. I think it's five phases, technically. It might be six. I, I remember because they've mentioned a couple different phases out there. But if they don't have one this week, that means they'll have one next week. And just because they don't have, just because they have six phases doesn't mean you'll have each phase will go up to the release of um, of ILW. It's more than likely that the phases will go up to the release of 3.23. And then when 3.23 comes out, you can still do those phase, those, those missions through uh, until Invictus happens or right before it at least. Dansk has close to no people with overweight. There's they're more uh, they're, they're they're more bicycle users than than in the Netherlands. Yeah, there's the 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 fundamental issue with the United States comes with we live unhealthy lifestyles, we eat unhealthy foods, and as a result, we have higher chances of getting diseases. And then the system itself is not built around handling that problem. The health system or not. And then all along the way, you have companies whose sole job is to suck the soul out of you, which is the problem. And there's no regulation. That's the real issue. There's zero regulation in the United States for that sort of thing. But that's another problem. Americans drive everywhere because we live far the fuck away from everything. You know, like half of the country still lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. Places that are hours away from, sometimes even hours away from, from hospitals. Whereas Europeans, ha and even uh, Canadians, have the advantage of being really, really close to cities. Most people live in cities or near cities, and their countries are so small that it's not dif like too difficult to get from one place, one side, to the, one side of the country to the other in a couple of, <laughs> couple of hours. So, like, I can drive for an entire day and not leave Texas. And Texas is the second largest populated state in the nation, which with the, the country being the third largest populated country in the world, that's a lot of fucking people. And yet even then it's spread out over this massive area, which is the size of Ukraine. <laughs> I love trains, all right? But apparently Americans hate trains. Bucky's is fucking amazing, yeah. Trains are expensive, but they're great. They pay for themselves all the time. They're a lot better and more convenient than um, than than cars are. Fuck, I would take a train ride from Texas to to like New York in a heartbeat. You know, I can sleep. I can be on my phone. I can be on a computer. I can go buy snacks. You can do what the fuck I want. I don't have to drive the entire time, and I don't want to have to go with an airport uh, airplane. I'm not. I trust trains more than I trust fucking Boeing right now. <laughs> no, I would like to take a, a a light rail, you know, a a metro rail to get a train station, to two hours to a train station, then then go to a train station somewhere else. We also have like bullet trains are a thing that exist in the world. Like plenty of countries use them. <laughs> the 
You match trans and you pink Okami. I, I, I grew up in the Bay Area and BART was amazing because, because it's a small area that's really close to the, sh uh, to the, to the shore. It's like, you've got the coastal hill range and the mountains. There's like, most people are crunched in California at the, to like the, the, the shoreline. And it's not really a lot of space. So most people build up. It's very similar to like old cities in Europe and stuff like that, where like you have to really you know, use space effectively. But as a result, there's a high population and everyone is driving. So if you want to go from, say, Oakland to San Francisco for like a business meeting or a party or an event, you have to go across the bridge. And the Bay Bridge is a nightmare to cross during any kind of major event or traffic. And it's not really the bridge itself as much as the traffic going to the bridge and then leaving the bridge where all the congestion is. And for the exact same amount of time it would take for you to get in a car, drive across the bridge and get there, in some cases, you can hop on a metro rail, which will get you to the exact same place faster or at the same time or faster. And you don't have to sit in traffic the entire time. It's fucking amazing. I've heard it's gotten worse since then, but like fucking ah, I love it. It was so convenient. If you just wanted to go anywhere, you could go because the train, as long as there was a BART train nearby, you can go. And then a lot of places had bus systems that worked pretty well, too. Oh, yeah, California would benefit from a rail service very well. It was originally when I was living there when I was like 18 was when they were planning on building the bullet train from L.A. to San Francisco. And I was like, fuck yeah, do it. It's fucking amazing. It's a great idea. Because it would take a little bit longer than it would take to get to an airport, check in, fly down to L.A. and, you know, get your baggage and everything else like that, which was, you know, like, I think three, four hours. Like, a bullet train would take about that same amount of time. So you don't have to get there as early. You know, you would probably be less less uh, less in in intensive in terms of security. I'm sure the security and stuff like that would happen still, but... And you don't, you're not crammed on a t metal tube. You're crammed, uh, flying in the air. You're crammed on, you're in a metal tube that's with a bunch of you know, like a long tube, longer tube with more space. Yeah, and New York is a great example where you can get pretty much anything you need in a five block radius. It's not too difficult. Oh yeah, no, I, I heard it was a giant clusterfuck. Classic long tube travel. Everyone gotta love a long tube. I prefer a long tube to a small tube. <laughs> there have been plans to do a bullet train system in, in Texas as well, yes. But the problem is, is that that threatens the oil industry, and the oil industry is not happy with any kind of uh, threat to their dominance. Yep, there was a big, um, a big campaign to get rid of uh, trains. In fact, most cities in America at the turn of the 20th century had um, trolleys. They had um, trolley cars, so that would that would uh, you know go around most places. Um, they had really good public transportation because you know the car didn't exist, <laughs> so you had to get from point to point, point A to point B in a city. They had these like basically miniature electric trains that would run on, you know, gears and, and, and electricity that they would just toot around the city a little bit. And they got rid of them all when uh, because the, you know, car, car manufacturers and the NAAA, which is a big car owner group founded in, in L.A., um, we proposed to rip them all up. Yeah, whereas rails were built into the streets themselves, yeah.
They're still trying to build the LA San Francisco train only from Bakersfield to Merced right now. And they're like 50, 35 billion over budget. Yeah, I've heard about that. At the very least, I'd love to see more metro area, um, like subways, you know, light rail. Because like Austin could fucking use one. <laughs> Dallas could definitely use one. I'm sure Houston could use one. I think most of the major cities in America could use a uh, could use a metro rail of some kind, just because it makes it easier to travel for like big events and stuff like that, and it makes it easier for tourists to travel around. Because when you have population increases in big cities like we're seeing now, it becomes a lot harder to uh, travel to locations because a lot of cities aren't designed for large populations. So, yeah, we've got a system in. Um, in Austin as well. It's a very small system that only goes like four or five stops. Uh, they want to expand it though. They want to expand it um, down to Kyle, I think, and up to Round Rock. So. But to tie this back to Star Citizen before I finish it up, uh, this is one of the reasons why CIG is doing the um, public transportation systems in the game because it's a lot easier to build a public transportation system to specific areas of interest than it is to allow players to get into a car and drive around. You think, you think like, do you want fucking traffic in Star Citizen? <laughs> when you have, what's gonna happen if you, if everyone's going to a one location and they have to drive to a location in a city and there are 500 people driving? Listen, I was around when Area 18 had buggies. It was always fire. There was fires everywhere. Yeah. Uh, who's on the captain's table? Oh, so it's 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 Logan plays. It's Tree 0311, and it's Radar Ranger, and we're talking about capital ships. We're going to discuss capital ships uh, in Star Citizen, the gameplay possibilities, what's planned, what we know about, and then what the possibilities are, and what are some of the roadblocks that CIG is going to have to overcome in order to build capital, proper capital ships in Star Citizen. That's what we're going to talk about. Man, Mike, you're gonna you're gonna hate this. When I was a kid, um, I I went to DC a lot actually as a kid. Thankfully, because uh, I had I have relatives who live in DC and uh, you know work in work in the uh, the the defense industry, um, and I've got uh, military relatives who've been stationed around DC and so on and so forth. So. So I end up, and, and I was in the Boy Scouts, so I went to the Jamboree, which was in D.C. We went to D.C. area, so, uh, and I've been been D.C. like with family and just, just for trips. So I've been to like D.C. like eight or nine times in my life uh, over like the course of like, I probably spent about a year of my life in D.C. to be honest. Uh, probably more like six months, but like in terms of like spending weeks there. And when I was first in D.C. as a kid, my biggest highlight of going to D.C., was riding the Mart. <laughs> so I was fucked to always like trains ever since. My parents were like, it's just the Bart, but but with a different color and in, D and in DC. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck, I like trains. <laughs> During the server meshing test, 
There was heaps of people riding the trams in Area 18. One of those trams was at least 20 people and it flew off into space. Three people tried to track um, um, Corundum. Keep go keep going, but remember, if you enjoy you enjoy the experience, because trains. <laughs> like the three people tied to a track conundrum. Keep going, but remember to enjoy the experience because trains. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> Super question: uh, uh, If anyone here in chat knows, if uh, if you do not, Paul, is the UEE advocacy marshal badge obtainable in game? I think you asked about this before. I don't know. I haven't heard about the ability to get the badge anymore. It might still be there. Hey, Thea. Oh, it's getting late. I've been streaming for about three hours and 30 minutes. I'm gonna call it a night. I will be back tomorrow morning, bright and early for our pubathon. I'll probably be doing a little bit of talking and hanging out first and waking up because I'm gonna have to go make myself breakfast and so, so forth um but uh i'll probably be doing my zero to hero account early on just to kind of enjoy that one and then i'll do uh we'll be going from that to either hell divers or um if cig releases overdrive then the overdrive mission i hope they do they might but they are offline for for tomorrow because it's a holiday so uh yeah Pretty, pretty much everything, all the government facilities are closed down here So for, for Friday. So so I've got tomorrow off entirely. So as a result, we're going to be doing 42 hours, not 42 hours, up to 42 hours. Minimum 16 hours. We'll be streaming for 16 hours tomorrow. And every time you donate, subscribe on Twitch, or give bits on Twitch, it will increase the timer to a maximum of 42 hours. So... Um, I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully you, in, you, you enjoy this. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black.